Montana Tech alumni band under the direction of Mr. Pete Knutson with our national anthem. Beautiful day for football. A little crisp, a little chilly, but uh, kind of football weather, Sonny. It is. Uh, right from the start here, Bruce, I think the atmosphere is one of college football at its best. The colors are here being presented by Montana Tech ROTC program. Teams are on the sideline. Officials are ready to go. Moments away from the kickoff. And joining us back on the booth, I should, do I call it a booth, a Dean, or a flatbed? Uh, we've been we've been calling it a booth ever since we got on this truck, right, Sonny? <laughs> you said the Dean of uh, Frontier Coaches, uh, Bob Green, the Dean of Color Men, Dean Conklin, back with us. Uh, we're ready to, uh, to go with our football game, and should be a great one. Both teams 2-0 and in the season, uh, and uh, as each team does play each other opponent in the Frontier twice on the season, these games are very, very important. And this one uh, is probably the, as big as there's been in the Frontier Conference this year. You really need to win at home. If you don't win at home, you're in trouble. But there has been a streak of uh, seven Tech victories over the last three years. The last time Carroll won was in 1995. They won here at Alumni Coliseum in Butte. They, uh, the game that was played in Helena was won by Tech. But Carroll is in a long dry spell of uh, seven defeats in a row to Tech. Let's go on the sideline to Gene McNulty King and Ron Davis. Well, keys of the game, Ron, I talked to Coach uh, Van Deest, and he said after their big loss last weekend, they really need a uh, play out of their quarterback, Martinson, and they need to not turn the ball over. For the Montana Tech Ore Diggers, it's easy. They've got to move the ball on offense. They have to get the passing game going and the running game. LaProsse has to get off to a good start. And on defense, it's going to be tough because Carroll brings out a great passing attack as well as a running attack. Hedick and the boys have got to play tough on defense. And for homecoming, you need everybody to step up for Montana Tech. LaProsse. Well, Petrino kicks off. LaProsse gets the kick return for Montana Tech. Carroll won the coin toss, uh, deferred Montana Tech, decided to have the football. LaProuse brings it up, pretty good field position as Montana Tech now will take over first down and 10 from Alumni Coliseum, a Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football. They'll have it first and 10 on the 33 yard line. We'll try to get down to Gene and Ron throughout the football game. H1 has a sideline. Some interesting stories in this football game this afternoon from Alumni Coliseum. Kane Clouch, the quarterback, and he's been impressive this year, Sonny as good as we've seen in the frontier in a lot of years. Well, he's a physical specimen for sure at 6'3", 220. Intelligent quarterback. He really carries out his fakes and throws the ball extremely well. He looks like a prospect that a lot of people would be interested in. Field is in excellent condition, Bruce. Uh, a big crown on this field. It's, it's dry. The footing looks great. And they once again, Sonny, the uh, the Frontier Conference teams have gone all out to make a good show for this television game. So second down now, the ball sitting on the 36, seven yards to go for Montana Tech, their first possession of the afternoon. Clouch now looks over the Carroll defense, which has played well this year. Swing pass goes to Jay LaProuse. And some tough yardage there for Jay. It's, it's gonna be well short of that first down. Thursday Night Football, a Saturday edition, is brought to you in part by Touch America, the Montana Power Telephone Company. LaProuse is a threat as a runner and as a pass receiver. He's ranked 10th in the Frontier Conference in receiving. So now third down, four, and four yards to go for the Diggers as they have the football for the first time just underway here from Alumni Coliseum. Bruce Parker along with Sonny Holland, Dean Conklin, Gene McNulty, King, and Ron Davis along with Rory Bowling. Clouch now on third down. I believe it is a completion. This time on the receiving end is Ryan Perry, the six-foot sophomore out of Shelby, Montana, and it's good for first down yardage. Excellent execution there, Bruce. The quarterback, again, with the threat of the run, holding the linebackers. They also had motion. It looked like it might have been a little confusing for the Saints there hit the ball, put it right on the money. The ball just shy of midfield at about the 49 and a half yard line in Montana Tech territory. Clouch now on first down, is gonna hand it off to LaProuse. He goes right up the middle and finds pretty good yardage before he's ripped down by the Montana, or the uh, Carroll College defense on the tackle there, number nine, Mitch Beezer. 5'10 senior out of Raymond, Alberta. Transfer from New Mexico Military, which also is where quarterback Nate Martinson came from. There you see the starting lineups for Montana Tech. Very good defense or offensive line for the Ore Diggers. And now on second down five after five yards on first down by Jayla Prowse. 
In motion. Caleb Zimmerman. Play fake now. Clouch off to Zimmerman, who was the motion man, and the ball just a little bit overthrown. That'll bring it third down and now five. You know, Bruce, what that motion man does for you, it dictates to the defense who's going to take him. Are they going to cover him man to man, or are they going to switch off and play zone? I know the coaches upstairs are paying real close attention early in the ball game now, how they're going to cover that motion man. Last week, Montana Tech got off to a great start against Southern Utah with two quick scores on Clouch touchdown passes, led it 12-0 before losing to the Division I AA T-Birds 30-12 in Utah. Now in a big third down play, Ryan Perry, the motion man, they're going to fake, and the end around now, it's going to go off quickly to Steve Halco, and Halco gets good yardage, first down yardage inside the 30-yard line. And there were two good blocks by Burt Fisher, number 65, and the running back, Jay LaProuse, when that uh, end came the rest of the way around and wanted to turn the corner, there was a double team. Steve Halco, the six-foot junior out of San Cooley, Montana, from his wide receiver position, picks up the good yardage. And it's first and 10, the ball on the 28-yard line. The Ore Diggers marching, trying to get that quick start and a lead over their counterparts from Carroll College. First and 10 now. LaProuse, the lone setback. Motion man is Jess Holman, the wide receiver out of Big Fork, Montana. And LaProuse has good yardage, lots of turf, close to the goal line before he's finally knocked out of bounds inside the five. Well, there you see, Bruce. Uh, they picked up the motion man, man to man, and LaProuse had the advantage of the linebackers being uh, concerned with that motion and found a good hole there, good yardage. Nick Perini, the freshman out of Helena Capital High School in Helena, Montana, was the last man to knock him out of bounds. Last man he had to beat. So it's first down, goal to goal, the ball on the five yard line for the Ore Diggers. Split to the left side is Renzi Kelly, who did catch a touchdown pass last week. The motion man is Paul Haber, the junior out of Shelby, and on first and goal. LaProuse has stopped short of the goal line. There you see LaProuse out of Butte High School. Outstanding freshman season. All conference as a freshman. He carries the ball a lot, which we saw in the game against uh, Western down there in Dillon, and he seems to get stronger as the day goes along. Typical with uh, good running backs. One of the outstanding Montana prep athletes in this afternoon's ball game was one of the leading rushers in the state as a senior in high school at Butte High. Ball on the four yard line, second down goal to goal for Montana Tech. Clouch to LaProuse now, and he's hitting the backfield. Getting good penetration there was Dusty Lobdell, the sophomore out of Lewistown, Fergus County High School, and he hit LaProuse right at the line of scrimmage. Tech brought in two fullbacks for the is their starting fullback. They also brought in Mike Ruley. By a, a lead block as well as a, a, a fullback right in front of him. Third down, goal to goal now for Montana Tech. The ball's still on the four yard line. A little shifting now. Two tight ends there, Bruce. Uh, they're trying to spread him a little bit here. Could be bootleg action. There we go with LaProuse again. LaProuse down close to the goal line. He's in for the touchdown. Jay LaProuse from four yards out. You know, what I see in that first drive there, what I've seen in Montana Tech in the uh, past game, it, it would appear to me, Dean, they have a very sophisticated offense. They have a game plan coming in here with a scripted offense to know what they're going to do, and then they want to see what the defense is going to do to cover. And I know you like the play action work that Kane Clouch does at quarterback. He, he does a good job of faking the ball. He carries it out and he has done a good job of moving this team down the field. Chris Casney, the kicker out of Helena in. That was a, a uh, nice drive for Montana Tech, 67 yards, 10 plays. Took up uh, a little bit over four minutes and the kick by Casney is good. So 10.50 left, Tech on top, 7-0.
Celebrate the new millennium and treasure our past with authentic Butte Copper coins and silver coins from Jefferson City. These limited edition coins make great gift ideas for your loved ones. They're sold individually or in sets. It's a keepsake of this millennium to take you into the next. Designed by a Montana artist to reflect our heritage and to celebrate our future. Culture. A pretty impressive drive to start things off for Montana Tech. 67 yards, 10 plays. LaProuse from four yards out, Kasney the PAT. And he'll be kicking off now to Montana Tech. Graffa from Grand Central along with Heath Wall back deep to receive for Carroll College. They fake the, the uh, reverse and Wall has a long way to run. Sonny, when you see a fake reverse like that, doesn't that mean that later on this afternoon we probably are going to see the reverse? That could very well be, Dean. Uh, that, that was good execution. There was a good crease there and he's a good tailback, which we saw in their first ball game, and he got it up in there. Down on the sidelines, Ron Davis. Hey, thanks, Bruce. You know, in that first uh, drive for the Ortigers, they did something they haven't done in eight years. They went to a huddle during the first quarter. Montana Tech never runs a huddle in the first quarter. Through uh, the Carroll College Saints off, the coaching staff over here saying, wait, we can transfer people in. They started making changes, but it was a little late. A little off-balance play by Coach Bob Green going to the huddle. Martinson goes to the air on first down, and he finds Nick Carroll. First down, Carroll. Carroll, Carroll, Carroll. Boy, Martinson can throw the football. We saw him a couple weeks ago, Sonny, against, uh, I believe it was Northern. It was a 69-0 game, and Martinson played awful well, as did Heath Wall, who just returned that kickoff. Then he had a long afternoon last week in, uh, in Helena against Central Washington. I guess the wind was really blowing. He only had one completion and 14 attempts for one yard. I'll tell you, a lot of people can have a long afternoon when it goes against Central Washington. They, they've long been a great football program. That moved up to the Division II ranks. A bad snap on the shotgun. Martinson's just going to get rid of it. Pretty good job there of making the catch. And the guy who we're going to call his name quite a bit this afternoon, Travis Hedick. And, uh, boy, he was right in the face of Nate Martinson. Martinson. Martinson did a great job on that, recovering that. He looked like a center fielder going after that snap. Um, and coming up with the football, getting rid of it, they're lucky to have the line of scrimmage in second down. Well, he saved about uh, a 15-yard loss. Absolutely. So it's going to be second down and 10 now. The ball on the 39-yard line in Montana Tech territory. Splitting wide to the left is Justin Thomas, who has the is the bread and butter receiver for Carroll College, and the ball just thrown behind him. Martinson tried to find his speedy wide receiver out of Helena Capital. That'll bring up a third down and 10. The Tech defense was playing off, giving the, the receivers room underneath. Uh, Josh Norbrine was behind the receiver and he really wasn't even ready to, to try to make a play on the ball. He was just keeping that receiver in his sights. We've made a little mistake here. J.D. Emmert is in a quarterback. His former teammates. We're gonna talk a little bit about that later. Team uh, McNulty King will have that story for us. But J.D. Emmert, the sophomore out of Helena Capital High School, is the quarterback for Carroll College. Ball thrown over the middle, and it's complete to Thomas. Justin Thomas with the nice catch. Going to be very close to the first down. Great hands on that reception. I'll tell you, he just got up in the air and pulled it down. And they're going to say it's a little bit short. Here we take a look at it, Sonny. And Emmert, who has come in uh, and uh, thrown the ball very well here early in the ball game, and he finds his bread and butter receiver, and that's Thomas. He steps up and puts that ball up there, and Thomas went up and got it. Fourth down two now for Carroll College. Four down territory. I'm sure they're going to go for the first down here. And the fans at Alumni Coliseum come to their feet. Good crowd on hand. It's homecoming for Montana Tech. Emmert under center. Center is Jason Gillum out of Corvallis High School. And Emmert's going to keep it. He'll have the first down. They ran down the line with that speed option uh, there, Bruce. And I'll tell you, there was a moment there. It looked like he might go in the end zone. That was fine execution. Uh, quarterback keeping the ball, reading it all the way. About an eight-yard gain. Take a look at the quarterback coming down the line of scrimmage, attacking the defense with the football, has the option to pitch, chooses to keep it and picks up the first down. Emmert Good execution. Emmert came in with 76 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns on the ground. So he can run the football. Outstanding career at Helena Capital High School. His younger brother 
a junior at Helena Capital, the starter for the Bruins this year, and they're the number one ranked team in the state. Emmert now gets it off to Justin Thomas near the sideline, and he'll have another first down for Carroll College. The Saints are moving the ball, Bruce. Norburn on the stop for Montana Tech. Norburn out of Napa, Idaho. 5'11", 174-pound sophomore. Isolation on the left side with most of the receivers, all the receivers except one over on the right. First, first and 10, the ball on the 11. They can get another first down. Gets tougher and tougher to throw the football the closer you get to the end zone. There's a big crease. He's in there. Morris out of Malta. Down very close to touchdown. Right down there, close. I this thought he was in. He's going to be very, very close. We'll wait and see where they spot the football. Just see, good see, straight ahead running. See the execution here, and they had the they had the defense spread out. It's hard to get into your goal line defense when you're on the 11 yard line. The ball on the three yard line. It'll be second down and two for the first down. And there's going to be some motion. Boy, this is a place you just can't make mistakes. Heath Wall got the, the carry, but it's going to go back five yards. I think there was some movement on the Carroll College line. So they'll have first and goal at the seven. All right, we're going to go down to the sidelines to Gene McNulty King. Thanks, Bruce. You know, we're seeing a lot of J.D. Emmert to Justin Thomas, number five. Justin actually leads the conference or led the conference in total yards up until last week. We only had 52, so it's real key for Justin to have a good game. On the J.D. Emmert side, the last time he was on this field, he was wearing tech green, and now he's in uh, Carroll colors. So he's hoping to spoil their homecoming and uh, look for tech to be trying to put a hit on him. Second down There's seven now. Thanks, Gene, after the penalty. The movement on the offensive line. Ebert now is going to fake the handoff to the head of his intended receiver. Tanner Egan was putting the heat on. Linebacker from Great Falls. He was trying to get the football to Casey Fitzsimmons, the tight end. And that'll bring up now third down for Carroll College. Justin Thomas, as Gene mentioned, uh, one of the top receivers and in the Frontier Conference, came in with 27 catches for 433 yards and four touchdowns, averaging over 100, 100 yards a game receiving yardage. Pretty impressive. From the shotgun, it'll be J.D. Emmert. Good pressure by the Tech line, and the ball is picked off. Stepping in to make that interception was Don McLean, the sophomore out of Kalispell. When he read that one all the way. There's the defensive corner, really disciplined. Staying, staying wide with his receiver, not getting over anxious when he sprinted away from him. And he came back to him and put it in the air and he stepped in front of him. And there was good pressure from the backside. You take a look at this now where Emmert's flushed out of the pocket. And now he lets the ball go to a receiver momentarily that's open. The, the tech defender steps in front of him and he's got the ball. Great reception, big hole. Carroll can't let him out of this hole now. They gotta hold him in there. Only the second interception on the season thrown by J.D. Emmer. Clouch now back in the quarterback on first down. He's gonna fake the handoff to LaProuse. As time, gets it off to Renzi Kelly. Kelly's still on his feet. Redshirt freshman from Butte Central. Can, uh, impressed with the time that uh, Clouch had there on the rollout to uh, set up and throw that football. He motioned to, to someone to go on down the field, but nobody made the break. I think he saw you open, Dean. I saw you going off this flatbed. You were open. Well, I wasn't wearing a green jersey, though, Bruce. <laughs> so it's going to be a first down on the ball sitting on the 22-yard line for Montana Tech. Clouch now, the lone setback, Jay LaProuse. In motion is Renzi Kelly. Swing pass to LaProuse. And the flag comes out. So as we sort things out, we'll wait and see what the penalty's all about. Sonny, on, on Carroll's last possession, they stayed in a seven-man front, tight ends on both sides until they got to third down, and then they split the ends out. They they loosened things up with the receivers, and uh, 
That was the play that wound up with the reception, with the interception. Saturday. Yeah. Go ahead, Sonny. He got flushed out of the pocket there. I think it was kind of a broken uh, play offensively, and it was uh, unfortunate uh, for Carroll. The ball was intercepted. Tech did make a great defensive play there, both with their defensive front and their secondary. Offensive holding. Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football is brought to you in part by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana. Our focus is on quality care, customer service, and affordable costs. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana. The penalty now goes against uh, Montana Tech. The holding call. Clouch now from the shotgun. On Chris uh, Fallhaber. The pass will go off to Jay LaProuse again. Gets some great blocks. And is down very close to midfield. But boy, some great blocks there by teammates of Jay LaProuse. And uh, it's going to be a first down. Well, it was a screen to the left side. And when he got around the corner, he had some room to run. I think we'll see in this activity, the wide receivers really become involved as the uh, ball goes in the air. Everybody reverts to a blocking status, and uh, LaProuse, being the back he is, he's very dangerous with the football. Well, you see him get outside. They're going to a lot of short passes here early. Carroll player is down on the sideline. There you see, great replay there. there. So we have 6.59 left from Alumni Coliseum. We'll take a break. Montana Tech over Carroll in the first quarter, 7-0. Pinkerton, the linebacker out of Helena Capital High School, and he seems to be okay. He's on the bench now talking with one of the trainers. I say he's okay. I'm sitting up here feeling pretty good. I don't know if he's feeling as good as I am. But 6.59 left. The ore diggers on top, 7-0. As uh, Kane Clouch will now operate from the shotgun. Quick pass off, and... Luckily for Montana Tech, the interception didn't occur because the closest receiver was Jeff Van Heel. They ran a crossing pattern, and the pass was behind both of them. Well, Clowns at this point is four out of six for 58 yards. He's been pretty darn effective. Uh, uh, he's extremely effective when he rolls on the corner. He does throw a nice ball. Second down, 10 now for the Ore Diggers as they uh, have been pretty impressive here in the first quarter moving the football. On second down, the ball handed off to LaProuse. Uh-uh, nowhere to go for Jay LaProuse. Joe Horn makes the stick. And we have a ch had a chance to talk with Joe Horn about the new stadium at Carroll College. Everybody's really excited for the next season when we finally get to open up and play in there. And uh, we really feel it'll, it'll really bring a home field advantage to us down here. We'll get more students at the games, um, a lot more faculty, and plus the surrounding community should you know, they, they're also getting excited, so they should turn out down here and uh, bring some more support. Yeah. I think a lot of people have seen them, Bruce. <laughs> they uh, moved up the highway from Bozeman at Montana State, and that stadium will seat about 4,000 to 5,000 people. Third down nine. Clouch has some pressure. That was one of the keys in the game. Put pressure on the quarterback, and they do this time successfully the sack is made by uh, Justin Sell, the sophomore out of Cold Strip, uh, Montana. Pretty good defensive effort there by Carroll College. Good penetration here by the defense. Uh, this is really an important series for the defense at Carroll College to stop the ore diggers. Uh, they advanced out of deep in their own territory, brought the ball to midfield, and that was a big series for the Saints on defense. Great job. Clunch got away from from two pursuers, he spun, but the third guy, the third guy was the charm. LaProuse now will punt it away for Montana Tech, a very short punt. This is where you tell people to get away, and it takes a Carroll. And one of the Carroll athletes tried to fall on it when it was rolling their way. <coughs> and Montana Tech comes up with it. That's hard to understand. That's a mental mistake there that uh, paid dearly for the punt. And we'll take a look at it, and I believe it was uh, Travis Honor who fell, or, uh, tried to get the football, and he's coming out of the game now. Honor returned uh, a pass interception or uh, a kick for a touchdown the last time we saw them play, and he was gambling on that that was unnecessary. There was no reason to be messing with that ball because it, it was surrounded by Tech players, and it was bouncing Carroll's way. So the second turnover of the ball game for Montana Tech, and in our first uh, meeting or first game on TV this year with Tech, 
They picked up three fumble recoveries in the first half against MSU Northern. LaProuse is stuffed at the line of scrimmage by Sell. Boy, and he is stepping it up for the Carroll College defense. The defense has picked up the pace here for the Saints, Bruce. I think the front uh, going head-to-head -head with the offensive line of the Ore Diggers, is a, it's a real battle. There has no momentum been established at this point in time. In fact, the Saints here in the last two series defensively have picked it up a pace. Clock continuing to run, five minutes, 20 seconds left here in the first quarter. Montana Tech on top, 7-0. There you see the bucket cam shot high above the field at Alumni Coliseum. Second down, now 11 for Montana Tech. In motion, Ryan Perry. Bounce going for his tight end, Ryan McGurk. Just a little bit overthrown, that'll bring up third down, 11. Carroll College is playing wide receivers man-to-man, -man and uh, the safety is free to go to the ball. I think that this type of uh, defensive coverage holds up as long as the defender is man-for-man or as skilled as the receivers. Uh, we'll have to watch that as it progresses through throughout the afternoon. There you see Kane, the quarterback out of Columbus, where he played for John Smith and has played very well this season. 15 touchdown passes to just three interceptions. Very impressive for Kane Clouch out of Columbus. Third down 11. Has some time and just overthrows Jess Holman. And that'll bring up a fourth down. A little skirmishing into the play between Chuck Hader of Carroll College and Moose Stillwagon, the right tackle from uh, Carroll, providing some protection for Kane Clunch. This is a young Carroll College defensive line. Anthony Patch is not in there right now. So they are going with sophomore, 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 and a freshman. Travis Honor is going to go back deep to receive the putt from Jay LaProuse. So a good job by the Carroll defense not giving up any points after that turnover. And a good punt for Jay LaProuse as it takes a Montana Tech bounce. And that's going to be inside the 10-yard line. And that's where Carroll College will take over. 4.48 left. Tech on top by seven. The richest ore today's employers could ever want to mine. Discover for yourself what everyone is talking about. Call Montana Tech at 1-800-445-TECH. The thought of staying in a nursing home. Van Dees talking with his Carroll Saints. He is not very happy with his team at the moment, the way they've been playing. He said, we're not going to play football this way. We're not going to make dumb mistakes. Earlier, Travis Honor had tried to, to fall on the ball, or maybe he was going to try to pick it up, and, and Honor was pulled from the game, and, and Coach Van Dees had something to say to him. Honor was not very happy when he went back in the, to receive the punt. And now he's talking with his defensive unit about what he expects from him. It has been a pointed conversation. Very, very intense, Mike Pandis, and we've known him all along to be an intense coach. In his days as an assistant at the University of Montana, and he went on uh, to the University of Wyoming, where he had great success with the Wyoming Cowboys as an assistant coach. His first head coaching job, and he's got his team off to a 2-2 two and two start, including 2-0 and oh in the Frontier Conference. Emmer now 3 of 6 for 30 yards with one interception thus far in the game. Just missed that last one. And this time it's uh, given off to Justin Thomas, and he doesn't have much room to run. Well, the story on Coach Van Deest is that while he was a, an assistant at Wyoming and Joe Tiller, the head coach, left Wyoming to go back to Purdue, Mike Van Deest said, I'm staying here because there's a job in Montana that I think is going to become an open in the next few years, and I want that job. It's Carroll College job. And he was right. He's done a great job filling in for a legend. Coach Petrino retiring after lots of years as the head coach of the Fighting Saints. Wasn't it something like 28 or 28 very successful years? Or maybe that was all that was a 28 for Northern being out of the league, but <laughs> Putter was there about all of that time. Third down now. Whoa! Emmer has some time to throw. Now it just gets hit as he releases the football. And there to make the hit is Curtis Haynes, the sophomore out of Tacoma, Washington. Give the credit to the defensive secondary doing a great job. There wasn't anybody to throw to, which gives the pass rush a long time to get there, uh, which they did. Sonny, this is one of those plays that you like from the bunny bucket cam. That's right. This is a great coaching angle. 
from that end zone. You can see the holes, you can see the blocks. Into punt now is Jordan Sermon out of Idaho Falls, Idaho Skyline High School. He's also a backup quarterback and gets it to turn over a little bit. Let's see which way it hits. It takes a tech bounce before it's finally recovered there by Nick Garafa, the freshman out of Billings Central High School, and the ore diggers will have great field position on the exchange. Well, the field position, we know, Bruce, uh, to establish momentum is certainly right now in the favor of the ore diggers. Uh, that drive, the bad punt decision, and now here they are, first and 10 on the 40 going in. Um, certainly momentum could be established here by the ore diggers. And we'll see how uh, much effect Coach Van Dees heart to heart with his defensive unit comes into play here. And really, I think their defense has been pretty tough to this point. First and 10 now for the ore diggers, the ball on the 38 yard line. Zimmerman, the motion man, now he sets. On first down, Clouch now will roll out to his left. Tough throw back against the grain and a pretty good throw. It was intended for Renzi Kelly, but a tough throw, Dean, as he has to, he's rolling against it, rolling to his left, and he's a right-handed quarterback. Nick Manzanak put a solid hit on Clouch just as he was releasing the ball. Manzanak is a six foot two inch, 230 pound freshman from Helena High. Boy, lots of Helena High and Helena Capital athletes in this football game. Both teams, uh, both come from very outstanding programs, both those athletes from uh, Tony Arnston's Helena Bengal program and the Bruins ranked number one, as we mentioned, in the state of Montana in double-A football. Zimmerman and Mansanti in the backfield behind quarterback Clouch. Kane hands off inside to Zimmerman, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage and nowhere to go there first for the Carroll College defense. The defensive unit is a little bit aroused. Dusty Lobdell again on the action. He's never far from it from Lewistown, Montana. He, he plays the game low. He's a sturdy young man at 6'2", 265, young, sophomore. And Chuck Hader also there, uh, the sophomore out of Billings Central. Pretty good uh, matchup with the offensive and defensive lines for both teams. It is. It's kind of a standoff, Bruce, uh, between the two fronts right here. Second down, or third down now, and 11 after the loss of one on the rush by Zimmerman. Make the handoff to Mansanti, and there's pressure again. Okay. And Manzanic, who Dean, you just mentioned, steps right up. The Saints, He's rushed hard. The Saints are not buying that uh, bootleg action by any sense of the imagination. You can see here where Clowns comes out, but the pressure has penetrated so deep, and that is a good athletic move by that rusher that time. So it'll bring up a fourth down and long, fourth and 21 for Montana Tech. LaProuse back into punt, honor back deep to receive the punt. Good snap. This time Hader says, or <laughs> Honor says, I'm letting it go. And it rolls down very nicely for the ore diggers as the ball will be inside the 10 yard line. Let's wait and see where they place the football. You know, you got to give the Saints credit here, Bruce. Two full series now where it's been three downs and out for the ore diggers. Their Saints have got to be fired up. Their effectiveness has been well received. Sonia was a little bit worse than three and out because they lost 12 or 13 yards on that possession with the sack. Down to Ron Davis on the sideline. Well, I was over on the Tech sideline, Bruce, and Montana Tech's really having a problem with the triangle defense that's being thrown at them by the front line of Carroll. They're lighting up one of their tackles on defense, five yards outside Montana Tech's tackle, and the diggers don't know how to match up. Carroll's taking advantage of it. It's a new surprise and a new twist, and Tech has to figure out how to stop it, or you're going to see more sacks like the last one. Mike Morris, the running back out of Malta, great yardage on first down. Wow, good way to open on first down and 10. John Crotston was there to make the tackle for the Ore Diggers, but not before a big gain by the running back out of Malta. You can see here uh, the center of the line, the back finds a crease and uh, makes good yardage right down the middle. Well, the offensive line is feeding off uh, some of that success and momentum and, and intensity that we've seen from the defensive unit. Crosston about the last man there to prevent the touchdown run. From the shotgun is J.D. Emmert, the quarterback out of Helena. And the screen pass, they were trying to get the football off to Burt King, 
Burt not real tall. We didn't see him there for a few minutes. 5'7", 162. He's a junior out of Haver. A very exciting football player when he gets his hands on the ball. But that'll bring up second down and 10. Big rush by the front defensively. Tall, tall people, and they get their hands up. Uh, he has to have a throwing lane, and if, if he doesn't have it, things are going to be difficult to throw that football. Second down, 10 now for Carroll College. The ball on the 24-yard line. There you see Emmert. And he goes back to the air. Wide open is Shane Larson. And Larson's going to have another first down for Carroll College. There to make the stop was Don McLean, the sophomore out of Kalispell. But Shane Larson, Dean, wide open. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards of him. How, how do you explain that, Sonny, that, that a receiver winds up so open on a crossing pattern? Well, I think they cleared it out. They're playing man in the secondary, cleared it out, and brought one back underneath, and uh, he was wide open. So first down and 10 for Carroll with two quick first downs after being deep in their own territory. The ball now on their own 45-yard line. Emmert under center. And Nick Carroll makes the reception for the Fighting Saints. Ooh. And a pretty good pickup there. You know, we have a great crowd on hand here at Alumni Coliseum this afternoon for homecoming for Montana Tech. But a lot of establishments in the Butte area watching this Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football. Special hello to fans in the Acoma Restaurant and Lounge, Deluxe Sports Bar, the Eastside Athletic Club, Jock Sports and Spirits, Knights of Columbus, the M&M Bar and Cafe, Maloney's Bar, McQueen's Athletic Club, the Met Tavern, the New Deal Bar, and the Vu Villa. Special hello for our Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football. Second down and one after a pickup of nine on the first down pass. Emmert now hands off up the middle. Morris keeps his feet chugging there, Bruce, and he manages uh, through traffic, heavy traffic, to pick up a good solid four yards and, and uh, get the first down. We look on the sidelines and see uh, Carroll Athletic Director Jeff Thompson. You can see it's tough going inside there with football, and he just keeps his head down, keeps plunging, and keeps those feet moving. It's a good, good run. Good hard run, and for a first down, the ball inside Tech territory now on the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Fighting Saints. Morris again, and they found something there as Morris chugs for more yardage. Right through the middle. The, the area that uh, we expect Travis Heddick to be patrolling. And uh, good for another first down for Carroll College. Take a look at it here. Um, same thing, running off tackle. And, uh, and the ball carrier just keeping his feet going. Uh, he's got the uh, tech on their heels right at the moment. This is a big, uh, this is a big momentum shift here. Um, field position wise. Now we see Carroll College moving the football well. We've come to the end of the first quarter from the Alumni Coliseum. Montana Tech leading Carroll College 7-0 back with the second quarter right after this. I called Carrie today. How's oh, she? as talkative as ever. Touch America will provide you economical fiber optic long distance service. Now don't forget I'm on the road all next week. But how will I tell you good night? We'll develop innovative calling programs for you. Did you know a hummingbird beats between 78 times a second? Sure. We'll open up a world of information to you. Honey, should we go to your parents' house for the holidays or mine? Well, couldn't we just stay here? We'll make it easy for you to keep in touch with your family. School today. Yeah. And we provide service from right here in Montana. Yes, I can the dog. Yes, you the dog. But there's one thing we won't do. We'll never call and interrupt your dinner. So please, call us. Is there something I missed We're Touch America. Telecommunications from the Montana Power Company. The Yellowstone, Madison, Gallatin, and Blackfoot. Montana's rivers are its lifeblood for agriculture, for fish and wildlife, for all of us who make our living here. Since 1978, the Nature Conservancy has helped Montanans protect their lands and streams because we believe a strong economy depends on a good environment. The Nature Conservancy of Montana. Common ground, 
and common sense. This is Robin, and this is Rockin' Robins. Rocking chairs, recliners, tables, and drawers like most people have never seen before. Which was kind of the problem, until Robin showed them on cable TV. And now sales are, well, you know, cable advertising. It's easy, it's affordable, it works. TCI Media Services. Get your ads worth. On natural grass fields all across Montana, it's Thursday Night Football. Featuring Montana's college teams in the Big Sky and Frontier Conferences, as well as high school teams in 6-man, 8-man, and traditional 11-man. It's all about Montana. It's primetime Thursday Night Football. Check your local listings for time and channel in your area. Thursday night, it's Western Montana College at Carroll College. Saturday at 1 p.m., it's Cal Northridge at Montana. Second quarter about set to go. Thursday night football is brought to you in part by your Montana Ford store. Stop by your Ford store today. There you see a couple of our Fords on uh, the football field area from Brooks Hanna Ford here in View to find sponsor of Thursday night football. Special thanks goes out to Brooks for all his support. And on the first down, it's going to be Morris once again with some pretty good yardage. We welcome you to Alumni Coliseum where Montana Tech leads it 7-0 over the Fighting Saints of Carroll College. It's Tech's homecoming. Bruce Parker along with Dean Conklin and Sonny Holland along with Gene McNulty King and Ron Davis. It's Frontier Football, 2-0 team. Sonny battling for the top spot in the Frontier and it was a very, very competitive first quarter. Well, we're looking at a momentum shift here. The Saints are on the move, uh, starting to their own five-yard line and they're now down in four-down territory. And it's second down six, the ball in the 27-yard line. Again to Morris, they're going to go to that play until uh, Tech shows they can stop it. You know, Bruce, I'm going to keep my eye on this, and I'm not sure that it is happening, but in the last two plays, somehow the Saints are running away from Travis Hedick. Um, I don't know if they're checking away from him or if it's just accidentally, but they're not. They're running away from him. Uh, four diggers are moving him around in the defensive front, so I don't know if it's by accident or on purpose, we'll watch it. Hedick now playing at a right defensive end, defensive tackle type position. And the uh, Saints have gone to their right side, away from Hedick, as Sonny mentioned. Third down five now, big third down call for the Fighting Saints as ever in the backfield along with Morris. Oh. And the pitch does go to Wall. He's down very close to the touchdown area, down out of bounds at about the two or three yard line, but Heath Wall makes his uh, name known. And we saw him a couple weeks ago, Sonny Rush, for just about 200 yards. Well, he's a fine tailback, and he knows where the end zone is. Uh, interesting, my comments about Hedick. They came with him hard on the left side, and they ran the speed option right to him. He took Emmert and said, how do you do with a great hit? But the pitch was there, and it was a big play. But he flipped sides just before they snapped he the ball. He did that. So yep. I think you were right, Sonny. They were running away from him, but they didn't check off in time. First and goal, five-yard line. This time it's Scott Bushnell on the carry for Carroll College. What a great drive, Bruce. On their own five-yard line, they're knocking on the door. We look and see Coach Mike Van Deest looking to get his squad on the scoreboard as we are just underway in the second quarter, 13 minutes left. We're happy everybody can uh, watch with us this afternoon if you're not here at Alumni Coliseum, but across the state of Montana on T TCI Cable Vision. Or AT&T. AT&T Cable Vision. Second down, goal to goal now from the six. They say Bushnell might have lost a yard there on first and goal. Wall's gonna get the football. Stumbled a little bit in the backfield. Still on his oh, feet. Oh, what a fine job there. Made a good recovery. Josh Norburn really snuffed out the play, the sophomore out of Napa, Idaho. And when Wall got to that corner, Norburn was right there with him. We'll see, uh, we'll see him, uh, Wall putting his stiff arm out there right in the face of the defender. And there was enough physical strength there, man to man, to uh, carry him almost into the end zone. Third down goal to goal from the six yard line. Big play, you can just feel it. Emmert will go from the shotgun with Morris in the backfield. It's a lone setback. Open. Touchdown. Oh, it, the ball was in. He was popped 
as Tyler Cotton out of Cascade makes the big hit. And now it's decision time for Coach Mike Van Deest. Boy, he saved the touchdown there. The receiver had it. He really did. He had it. Looked it in, and that defender, Tyler Cotton, just popped it. Do you think Emmert was a little bit slow in releasing the ball, Sonny? Because that receiver was open as he came across the, po the post area. Could have been just a tad. Randy Dagenhart will be in to attempt the field goal. Emmert the holder. The ball is put down. The kick's up. And it's good. So Randy Degenhardt gets the Fighting Saints on the board. 12-24 left. Carroll now on the board, trailing Tech 7-3. Three after the Degenhardt field goal from 23 yards out. And Rory Bowling, our statistician, tells us 89 yards, 13 plays. Short kickoff picked up by LaProuse. Prowse still on his feet and gives care, or, uh, Tech a pretty good uh, chance to start. We're going down to Gene McNulty-King. Thanks, Bruce. Not only is Coach Van Deese very excited about the three points on the board, but that long drive also gave the defense a great rest. As the plays prior, it was three and out. They were real worried on the sideline. The defense was going to have a tough time getting through the entire game. Bruce? Thanks, Gene. Very impressive drive, Sonny. Uh, 13 plays, took a lot of time off the clock, and they did get some points out of it. Well, you can just see the offense feeding on the defense and fight, vice versa, Bruce. Uh, the Saints right now are excited. That was a fine quarter for them. Bounce now, the quarterback back in for Tech as they have the ball on their own 32-yard line. And on first down, Jada Price. Oh, boy. They're rallying to that football there, Bruce. They got two-thirds of their football team on that hash mark, and that's what makes a good defensive football team. It, it takes... One guy to bring a ball carrier down with a picture perfect tackle. If it's not perfect, it takes two and three and four times that many players, and, and they're getting them there. Good things happen when you're close to football. Their first for Carroll College was Jason Petrino, the 5'10 senior. He lives in Helena, played his high school at Flathead High School. Clouch now on second down and 10 as there was no gain on the play. Motion man is Steve Halco. LaProuse is hit at the line of scrimmage again by Petrino. And LaProuse just forges forward for a couple yards, but a good stick there by Petrino. That was a good tackle down low. And uh, I'll tell you, he's bringing down a good, a good uh, tailback there. Uh, this young man knows what to do with the football. See him lower his shoulder there and struggle for more yardage. It's a very good tackle. He picked up another two or three yards after he got hit. We see Nick Martinson warming up on the Carroll sideline, the starter most of the season for Carroll College. Emmert's come in and done a very nice job here in this first quarter. 10.54 left second quarter. Clouch now finds his receiver wide open in the secondary, good for a first down. Ryan McGuire makes the catch. The sophomore out of Flathead High School and Kalispell gets the uh, reception from uh, Clouch. Your, your diggers needed this one, Dean. This was a big play for him. Tech sent four receivers straight up the field. Ball was well thrown and, uh, and a good reception there. They really needed that. Field position is important here. We're, they're now at midfield. Well, the wind has switched a little bit, moving around. It's at Carroll's back now. It's blowing out of the south. So they were going to have the wind at their backs for the rest of this quarter. And Jay Prost breaks loose. He's gone. Jay LaProuse on the long run for a touchdown for Montana Tech. I think it's, we'll check with Rory Bowling, our statistician. I think it was 47 yards, 46 yards officially. Boy, an impressive run by Jay LaProuse. And we see why he was an all-conference performer last year for the Ore Diggers. You know, there's something about knowing where the end zone is. And here LaProuse, as soon as he breaks the line of scrimmage, he knows there's a crease there. He knows where it is. And I'll tell you what, nobody's going to stop him. He's in there for six. 46 yards in just four plays. It took only two minutes. And Tech answers with a touchdown drive of their own. And to attempt the extra point is Chris Kasney, the kicker out of Helena, Helena High School. Ball's put down, kick up, and good. So with 10.26 left to go here in the second quarter, Montana Tech leads it 14-3. Coach Bob Green, he's got to be a little bit happier after his team took it down the field and got uh, one more touchdown. Jay LaProuse with his second rushing touchdown of the afternoon. And Tech goes on top 14-3 with 10.26 left in this first half. And uh, 
Boy, the Prowse has been impressive, Sonny. He has that, Bruce, uh, getting in the end zone. At this time, number 30, 32 sophomore, Jay LaProwse, 12 carries, 106 yards. Heath Wall is going to get the kick from Kasney. And again, they fake the reverse. So Heath Wall still with the football. And gets a pretty good return for Carroll College. Let's go on the sideline to Ron Davis. Well, you were just talking about Jay LaProuse, Bruce, and Sonny said 106 yards on 12 carries. But have you noticed, he punts the ball. He also is the return man on kickoffs. And uh, the young man's only the second true freshman to start for Montana Tech. Usually they redshirt, but not Jay LaProuse and not Travis Heddock. And LaProuse is doing it all for the Diggers today. He's the guy they wanted to step up. He's done it for the Diggers. And he has a reception as well, Ron. He's been getting it done. So first down now, Emmert back in at quarterback for Carroll College. 10-15 left, his squad down 14-3 on first down. And a flag is thrown, and we're going to see two flags. And I, you know, and I think, I think, Dean, that it was pass interference both ways. I think it was holding at the line of scrimmage on Thomas, and then I think it was P.I. Uh, down near midfield. I wasn't watching what was happening near the line of scrimmage because the, the receiver ran an out and up. He got he got a, a pump fake from his quarterback, and, and he and he went up the field, and it was uh, almost I don't I think it may have been an inadvertent trip, but uh, offsides. So it was an offsides against uh, Montana Tech. They'll take the pass interference call, and Thomas is a guy you always got to keep your eyes on. There's a couple of Helena Capital guys trying to hook up. That was a, an eye contact situation with the quarterback looking and, and pumping and the receiver breaking up the field. So the penalty is marched off. The ball now is just shy of the 42-yard line in Carroll College territory. It is an automatic first down for the Fighting Saints. Thomas goes to the left this side. Coming to the right is Nick Carroll in the slot. Burt King for Carroll College. From the shotgun, the lone setback is, Mike, or is, uh, is Morris. Over the middle, Thomas. Makes the reception. Dean looks like another first down for Carroll College. It's right out in front of us, Bruce. And uh, I, th I think the spot is going to give it is a first down. Coming back on that slant, look-in pattern. A receiver comes back looking right at the quarterback. Ball is well thrown. Moving the chains, Bruce. Well, we've seen uh, each one of these teams. This is our second uh, visit with both Carroll and Montana Tech. The first time we saw him, Dean, one team scored 69, the other 48. So offensively, both very impressive. And obviously, there are three teams in the Frontier Conference, Rocky Mountain being the third, all capable of scoring. They are the upper tier. Quarterback draw goes maybe a half a yard. And Tanner Egan was not fooled at all on that one. And uh, Dean uh, also had a chance to talk with uh, defensive end from Montana Tech, uh, Ben Tokas. His comments about never losing to Carroll College. Oh, I think we'll do pretty good. Uh, Carroll's a good team this year. They have they've beat Rocky early, and they've been playing well lately. But uh, I think our chances are pretty good. Yes. Thanks, Ben. And now it's a second down and a long nine for Carroll College from the shotgun is Emmert. Who's the man with the football? As he dives into the end zone is Justin Thomas. Would you believe it, Bruce? From 48 yards, Sonny. They're moving this football uh, like they were down in Lame Deer. They're from one end of the field to <laughs> the other in a matter of few plays. The receiver took it in the, mid in the midst of uh, tech people around him, and he looked like a deer running, running down through the alfalfa field. So we just talked about how impressive Justin Thomas was as a wide receiver, and he goes 48 yards with the touchdown pass, and the extra point kick is up. It didn't look pretty, but it got through. He did a skid. So nine minutes showing the clock left here in the first half. Carroll comes back with a touchdown, some magic of their own. They trail it 14-10. Uh, coming off that 48-yard touchdown pass to Mr. Justin Thomas. Petrino set to kick off for Carroll College, and uh, boy, I was impressed with the way that Carroll came right back to score. Well, that was a beautiful drive. Didn't take long to get on the board. One and a half minutes. Well, Prowse down near his own goal line. And 
Shane LaFrouse brings it up close to the 45. Beautiful return. Boy, last week in Lame Deer, you guys saw some kick returns. You know, uh, that was the thing in that football game. I'd like to take a real good look at Jay LaProuse here on this return. I think everyone who's ever carried the football will appreciate what he does with this 40-yard turn. You see him when he breaks the outside. Watch him switch the football. There it goes from left to right. Now he's got the traffic on the inside, picks it up with his inside shoulder. That's, that's beautiful technique there. Plus, he's out to the 40-yard line. You know, I was wondering what an ore digger looked like, Dean, and I just saw one run by in front of us. I don't think that was an ore digger, Bruce. <laughs> I think that was the people, that was a representative of the people who financed them. <laughs> On first down, King Clouch now looking, has time, gets the ball off to Ryan Perry, who makes the catch right in front of Travis Honor. Gain of about seven. There was, pretty, down. there was pretty good coverage because Clouch had to pump, reload, pump, reload. It was his third time before he let loose of the ball. And we've talked about some names that, that we thought we were going to talk about in this football game, but there's one, that, and after this play we'll come back and talk about that, that has not been mentioned much here in the first half. 8-12 and the clock running left first half. Clouch now has LaProuse in the backfield. Perry and Kel Kelly out to the right, but uh, LaProuse is going to get the ball. A little bit of... Uh, I think he slipped there a little bit, yeah, Bruce. We haven't had any rain, but I'm sure that the field was frosted over at night. Still a little bit chilly here. Number 39, Aaron Triplett on the stop for the Saints. Triplett makes the stop for Carroll College. Up third down now for Montana Tech. Aaron Triplett, a six foot one sophomore out of CM Russell in uh, Great Falls, Montana. So 7.32 left and the clock running. Third down for Montana Tech. And we see the homecoming royalty starting to make their way onto the field. It's homecoming at Montana Tech this afternoon. Clouch now. Screen pass set up beautifully. The Prouse now fights for the first down. I think he got it. But you know, there was a guy there who didn't have a green jersey on who caused some problems at Jay Pinkerton. And LaProuse did a good job. He made about five yards running about 36 inches off the ground. And it is a first down, but just a, a good job there. Clouch let it set up. LaProuse uh, gets a lot of this on his own. There you see Pinkerton, Sonny, who does a good job. Right, and LaProuse is almost down like Dean said, but managed to go far enough to get the first down and move the chain. First down now as the ball inside Carroll territory, sitting uh, at about the 46-yard line. Ryan Perry and uh, goes wide to the right side, uh, along with Steve Halco from Montana Tech. The lone setback is Jay LaProuse. Clouch, pretty nice uh, fake there, and he is going to be rushed hard, gets the ball off. And that's a pretty good effort there to even get it off, and Ryan McGuire, I think, make the catch. Big time pressure there by uh, Carroll's number six, Chuck Hader, six foot two thirty sophomore out of Billings. You can see him putting the pressure on Clouch here. I don't know how Clouch got the ball off, but he did manage to get it off. And they gain about four yards instead of losing some yardage on the play. Hader came uh, from his defensive end position out of Billings Frank Central down, High School. Down second down now. They're going to say he got four. Second down, six. Kelly and Perry split wide to the left side. In the slot now in motion is Caleb Zimmerman. On second down, it's LaProuse again, and he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Pinkerton. Pinkerton. They're not giving any quarter here, Bruce, either offense or defense, Tech or Carroll. They're just smash mouth, one after the other, up and down this field. We've got a tight football game well into the second quarter, a typical hard-knocking Frontier Conference football game. 541 left in the first half. Montana Tech on top over Carroll, 14 to 10. Joe Horn on, on the last stop. Had a chance to visit with Mr. Horn in our first quarter. Kelly now to the left side. In the slot is Jess Holman. In motion now, Ryan Perry. Clouch. The ball tipped, knocked around, almost intercepted, and then almost caught. And Kane Clouch took a shot in the backfield. Manzanek. And he got up very slowly. 
Kane Clouch now will go out of the ball game as we do have a fourth down. So Carroll scores quickly, and their defense comes through with a stop, and they'll get their hands in the football with lots of time left here in the second quarter. The clock now at 5-12. Travis Honor back deep to receive the punt at about his own 10-yard line. Good roll and a good punt. It's going to go out of bounds inside the 20. And Jay LaProust does a nice job of just pooching it to either of the sidelines. Got that ball out of bounds. No chance of a return. Well placed. So the Fighting Saints with 5.07 left will take over on their own 15-yard line. Embert, who's gone all the way at Q for the Fighting Saints, comes back in with the play from Coach Mike Van Neest. Nick Carroll goes to the left side. Justin Thomas to the right in the slot for Montana Tech, or for Carroll College. On first down, Embert. Wide receiver screen to Thomas, and when he gets his hands on the ball, lots can happen. Still on his feet, he gets a first down. You know, the Saints are doing a good job taking the, taking the feet out of uh, that big defensive front of uh, the ore diggers and creating passing lanes for Emmer. You can see uh, they took uh, Travis Hedick right off his feet. Allowed uh, a good passing lane for Emmer to throw the football. So it's first down yardage on the first down pass play from Emmer to Thomas. Thomas now to the right side, Carroll to the left. Heath Wall and Morris in the backfield with quarterback J.D. Embert. Embert has some time. Gets a couple blocks. And gets up uh, for about 15 more, call it 13 more, and another down for Carroll College. Number 93, Matt Takis on the stop for the Diggers. Well, it doesn't matter how you move the chains, it's that you do move them. And here you see Mr. Emmert doing a fine job, getting flushed out of the pocket, chased by Travis Hedick, and come downfield for a first down, first and 10. So the Fighting Saints moving the football with 420 left here in the first half, and they have it first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. Trips to the right side for the Fighting Saints. And the call goes to Mike Morris. Hear the coaches on the Carroll sideline. And, well, Dean, we're on the Carroll sideline. <laughs> we are. We're right behind their bench. <laughs> Linebacker number 90, Shane Barrett, 6'3", 237, senior out of Idaho, put a good stick on the ball carrier that time. So a pickup of about two, second down and eight now for the Fighting Saints as they near midfield with 345 left. There you see J.D. Emmert. And it's got to feel good for him, Dean, coming back uh, where he played last season and, and playing very well in the first half. He's had a very good first half, except for that one interception at the end of their first drive. Emmert now, with more pressure, stops and fires and tends the ball for Nick Carroll. But there on the defense was John Croston. And we'll go down to Gene McNulty King on the sidelines. To establish the passing game, and now with that last 47 yard pass, it's really going to open up Carroll to do a lot of the draw plays and the screen passes, and so we'll be looking for that on our team. Bruce? Thanks, Gene. Third down now, eight for Carroll College. I think you can see Mr. Emmer's confidence building here, Bruce, as he's moved the football very well. The last I like, I like the looks of him right now. This time he'll roll to his left. Stop and throw downfield, intended for Thomas. A little bit overthrown. Thomas uh, had a chance, but a flag is down. It's in the area of the hold. Let's wait and see on the call what's going to take place here. Hedick is motioning that it's against Carroll. He may have been the player who was held. It looks like they're going to refuse the penalty. And that'll bring up a fourth down. That's the call. So fourth down now, and the Saints will have to punt. Jordan Sermon, the freshman at Idaho Falls, will be the man punting the football. And back deep is Steve Halco for Montana Tech. Kicking game so important at this stage of the ball game. The game is really close. Important to handle the football. 
Alco catches it in the crowd, picks up about seven yards on the return. And with 3.12 left, that's an eternity in the Frontier Conference. We saw <laughs> the things that Rocky Mountain College can do with not very much time, and, and Carroll and Tech, uh, 3.12 is a lot. It's almost a quarter for these guys. Rocky scored twice in less than three minutes, and they had a, a third shot at it that they couldn't convert. So Tech will have the football on their own 31-yard line. They'll have it first down and 10. Kane Clouch uh, with a quick start in the ball game has been held in check here as of late. Jay LaProuse has played very well for the Ore Diggers offensively. He's the lone setback. In motion is Mike Rooley. Clouch hands off on first down, and here comes LaProuse. He steps out of bounds. We need to remember that Carroll will, will have the choice at halftime. They'll they'll probably take uh, they'll receive the kickoff in the second half, and Bob Green does not want to let Carroll get momentum at the end of the half to carry over into the second half. Let's go down to our party guy, Ron Davis. Well, I'm down here at the party tent with a lot of proud party crowd. How you doing, guys? They're enjoying the It's Academic poster. This poster is available at your local school for $5. Proceeds going to your local school. It's Academic features a lot of the different mascots of Montana Power Thursday Night Football. Enjoying the game from a distance. Not like these guys. They're down here on the ground. enjoying. These are sponsors of Thursday Night Football for Montana Power Football. And they're having fun today, aren't you? Yeah! Guys, I'll see you in the third quarter. Bye. What did you have to pay him to do that? Okay. You're, yeah, we're going to get you out of there at halftime too, Ron. Thanks a lot. Uh, short gain on second down for LaProuse, so it'll bring up third and about four. Let's call it three for Montana Tech. Clock now under three minutes left in the first half. Dean will have lots of excitement and some good interviews here at halftime, and we'll go over uh, our scoring and stats. Special thanks to our statistician, Rory Bowling. Provide us all the information. Perry and Halco split to the left side for Carroll College. LaProuse, the lone setback. Ruley in motion. Clouch now decides he's going to tuck it up and run at 6'3", 220. He's a pretty imposing figure, and that'll stop the clock to move the chains as Kane Clouch gets first down yardage. You know, he's an opposing guy with the football. Very impressive. 6'3", 220, and Sonny, he just tucks it up and goes. He got a good block for Moose Stillwagon as he came around the left side to help spring him. They'll wind the clock now as the chains are set. The ball just on the uh, Carroll College side of the 45-yard line. First and 10 for Montana Tech. Lindsey Kelly left side now, along with Jess Holman. To the right goes Ryan Perry. Holman in motion. Bounce sets and throws. Okay, go, go. And he had Renzi Kelly there. But he was well covered this time by Mitch Beezer. Beezer, good coverage there. And that'll stop the clock with 1.51 left in the first half. You know, Bruce, we have two football teams here. It would appear somebody's looking for a knockout punch. Right, kind of at a standoff. Uh, midfield, two minutes to go. Really nothing's been established momentum-wise except they're both tough, and they're not going to give any quarter. Second down now, 10 yards to go for the ore diggers. Good pressure as Clouch has to run around and the flags come down, and I think that Chuck Hader was just flat held and a fumble. Well, there's another flag at the, at the end of the play. Laundry is out. Every flag on the field is on the ground. Well, I think Hader was held as he was trying to get the sack, and the fumble is going to give it, I believe, to Carroll College. With lots of time left, 140 left here in the quarter. Was that Manzanek at the end of the, the that caused the fumble? Well, we'll take a look at it and see Clouch now is running around, does a good job of getting out of the pressure. I'm not sure what happened there, what the flags were for. Uh, you can see here now the activity and the ball's loose on the ground. Here comes another flag. Uh, I'm still not sure what they were all about. At any rate, Carroll with the football, minute and 40 seconds to go, time to score. Okay, it's uh, first and 10 now for J.D. Emmert and crew. Inside 
Montana Tech territory. Thomas open, he gets the ball and it's a first down for the Fighting Saints. Good throw by J.D. Emmer. Well, there we go. This could be that knockout we were talking about a little bit ago. I'm told uh, that the flag was thrown uh, to act as a beanbag rather than the beanbag. Great pass there, great reception. Four down territory. All they want to do is get on the board here. Emmert now, first and 10 for the Fighting Saints. Is hit as he throws, but Thomas makes the reception, and it looks like another first down for Carroll College. Boy, it happens quick in the frontier. It does. Move that football. They're going to say it's only nine yards on the play, so it'll be second down and one for Carroll College. The clock now winding down near one minute. Tanner Egan really put a hit on Emmert. We see Emmert taking a lot of abuse there, but he, he's up and at him every play. Again to Thomas. This time, uh, Justin couldn't hold on. It was Chuck Haynes, or Curtis Haynes, that uh, knocked the ball loose there. But the incomplete pass stops the clock with 58 seconds left here in the first half. Tech leading at 14 to 10. The ball sitting uh, on about the 18-yard line in Montana Tech territory. This has been a fast-moving first half. And the man who made the, uh, the force the fumble, Dean on the sideline talking with one of the trainers. Important thing here, Bruce, is get that first down. Don't worry about the touchdown. You got time to get that. Get the first down. Second down now, or third down, one to go. And uh, Emmert's going to keep it. He gets the he first down, forward. but the flag comes out again. He got more than the first down. He almost scored. It's coming back. I think it's holding on Carroll College. I think it, I think Travis Hedick was the man being held. He motioned over to Coach Bob Green that it was a hold. Boy, and that hurts. You mentioned that we had not heard a lot of, of uh, Travis Hedick calls, but he has caused at least two penalties with Carroll's offensive line trying to stop him. He's also caused uh, the Fighting Saints to run away from him. Yeah, there's no question about it. He had to get their attention in the first two ball games. As I recall, he had something like four fumble recoveries and five or six uh, hurries on the pass. So he gets your attention. They know where he is at all times. That was a tough uh, penalty for the Saints right there. Third down, now 11 for Carroll College. Emmert has time. Looks over the middle, almost intercepted by Haynes. But he had some time to throw the football. Good job by the secondary of Montana Tech. He did. They were, uh, they had him well covered. It just wasn't anybody to throw to. 30 seconds left, first half. Tech leading at 14-10. And let's wait and see if uh, what they're going to do. And they're going to take a timeout. I don't know if they We're going to keep things right here. Saints, I believe, are going to go for it on fourth down. A field goal attempt would be kind of tough. It'd be right into the teeth of a fairly stiff breeze. It, I think it would have an effect on the football. So this is uh, an interesting call here now. Fourth and uh, 11 for a first down. Ball on the 28-yard line would be a long field goal. 45-yarder if they go for the field goal. I'm not sure with that win they, they got leg enough to get it there. 30 seconds left. We see Mike, uh, Coach Mike Van Dees saying, let's get the number one defense ready to go in case they don't convert on this fourth down and 11. You mentioned the fellow who forced the fumble, Justin Sell. He probably is not going to go back in. Emmert, 9 for 21, 110 yards, one touchdown. That to Justin Thomas. So here we go, fourth down and uh, 11 for Carroll College. Carroll and Thomas split to the right side. Burt King split to the left side along with Rick Fusey. From the shotgun is J.D. Emmer. The middle screen goes off to Carroll and I think he's short of the first down. Let's wait and see. He is going to be short. Here comes the Carroll defense. So Montana Tech does a good job and gets some momentum as they put a stop on Carroll College on that quick drive. And Justin Sell remains on the sideline. You know, 
know one of the most happy people on the, in this stadium and or at that moment was coach Bob Green knowing full well a touchdown by the Saints there would have been real tough to go in the locker room uh, and swallow and so he a pretty happy guy on that green sideline 23 seconds left and it looks like uh, Clouds will just take a knee to end this first half and he does so that's going to do it for our first half here from Alumni Coliseum. It's been an exciting one. We have another half to come that could provide all kinds of excitement here in Frontier Conference football. And uh, now they're going to say uh, they're going to wind it again, so they're going to make him do it one more time. I don't think he has to do that with the uh, clock now still with 20 seconds on it. So we're at halftime. Carroll College in Montana Tech. The Ore Diggers lead it 14 to 10. We'll come back with a recap and lots of interviews here at halftime from Alumni Coliseum. as Ron now trying to get Coach Green to come over to the sideline. But we're going to keep things right here, Ron. I see him uh, making his way over. There's a digger golf cart. He should just hop aboard and get a ride. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Green is carrying the, uh, the white board with him and has all kinds of things attached to his neck. And his team leading at 14 to 10 at halftime. We were up 14 to 3 before Emmert hit Justin Thomas for that 48 yard touchdown pass. And let's go down sideline now to Ron Davis. Well, thank you very much, Bruce and Coach Bob Green, just making a cross field coach. A good, tough uh, first half of football. Oh, yeah, hey, you know, we knew it would be. Carroll's playing exceedingly well. They've thrown a few change ups at us, done a great job of coaching. But we've got to just make sure we execute. Uh, uh, defensively, you know, we've given up a couple of balls on crossing routes, a, a deep route with a Pass interference we got to work on. Offensively, they've changed up. We've got to maintain our blocks a little bit more and stay on our plan, right? Good luck, Coach. Have a good second half. He's in a hurry. He's got a lot to talk about, as you heard there, fellas. The Diggers up 14-10 at the half. Thanks, Ron. We're going to take a break. 14-10, Montana Tech leading it. Stay with us. We're looking for these pictures to go a lot further than just Montana and, and let people around the country know that there's other people besides our, for example, uh, TCI, that's AT&T. Well, we compete against those guys uh, in the broadband market, and we think we can do that. We want them to see who we are, how we live our lives. And I'll tell you what, we're sure having fun here with this great, great football game. Well, we really are, and, and I think uh, I think you're looking at the same kind of game as the Rocky Mary game where uh, nobody knows who's going to win it, but everybody's going to walk off the field exhausted and friends. We have a great second half coming your way, so stay with us. Back to you, Bruce. Thanks, Ron and Steve. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, we, uh, the Tech Ore Diggers have come back out, and they're fired up in this second half. Steve, I would like to have Ron ask uh, Steve another question. Oh, I guess they've walked away. I wanted to know if, if the next thing we're going to do is uh, is a different sport. We, we started with Monday Night Basketball, and we went to Thursday Night Football. I'm curious if we're going to go to Rodeo. Are we going to go to Rodeo? We're going to go back down to Ron. Ron, I don't know if you heard us down there, but you have Steve back. Rodeo or soccer, one of those. Rodeo or soccer, which it's one's not real. Well, it's not really me. It's really, it's really the shareholders of the corporation. But any, anything that we can do that expresses the broadband, the technology that, that we're trying to build across the country that fits into that, we'd like to do. How rodeo about could be there, guys. Well, what the heck? You know, what? I think Rodeo might. Dean has a NASCAR question. racing? NASCAR racing, Steve? Uh, no, Dean. As soon as yeah. we get a track in Montana, we'll do it, guys. Thanks, Ron and Steve. Let's go to uh, maybe the offensive star for Tech in the first yeah, half, Jayla Prouse. And Sonny, he just had an outstanding half, including uh, two touchdown runs, the last from 46 yards out. Well, he's a football fan's football player, I'll tell you. Jayla Prouse uh, carries a name that uh, has been synonymous, synonymous with football for many, many years in the state of Montana, and that is Uncle Tom uh, with the Bozeman Hawks. Uh, Tom the Prouse being one of the senior uh, veteran football coaches in the state, uh, just a great human being and did great things for students and staff and the people of the Bozeman community, Uncle Tom. Jay has 17 carries for 154 yards. Oftentimes, that's a total for an entire game. That's his first half. So what we're looking at here is another half of football. Each, uh, each team had the ball 15 minutes the first half. I can't believe how close the halftime stats are in time of possession, yards gained, and points on the board. We're going to go down sidelines to Team McNulty King. We're trying to find uh, Coach Van Deest as Carroll is just coming back out now to start the uh, 
second half. We still haven't seen Coach Van Dees, but as soon as we see him come through back onto the field, we'll go right down to Gene McNulty King. And now we see Coach Van Dees running out. Now we'll see how good Jean is, if she can stop him in front of that camera. Let's go down to Jean and Coach Mike Van Deest. Thanks, Coach. Uh, things really picked up towards the end of the second half. What do you have, or the end of the first half, what do you have planned for the second? Well, the biggest thing is we had four opportunities in, in the red zone, only came in with one touchdown, and that was uh, a little disappointing. We had too many penalties. We had two holding penalties, and then we had a, a legal procedure penalty. And that's something we've got to eliminate. But uh, we're just going to try to keep doing what we're doing. Um, Keith Wall, Mike Morris doing a great job running the ball, and we're going to try to stick with that the second half. Are you gonna, it looks like you've been doing a lot of passing game. Are you going to try to stick more with that or go to the running? Well, we're trying to mix it up a little bit. Uh, the option game worked a couple times, and then we got the holding call down here when uh, J.D. made a great backside cut. But uh, we're going to try to keep him off balance. And uh, Heath Wall is tremendous speed, so hopefully we can get him on the perimeter once or twice. Great. Thanks, Coach, and good luck in the second half, Bruce. Thanks, Coach. And, Gene, uh, Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football and this second half kickoff is brought to you in part by the Montana Power Company. It's a wonderful life, the Montana Power Company. Well, it was an exciting first half. I don't expect to see much different in the second half, uh, Sonny and Dean. Uh, it was uh, some good offensive performances by both squads, and I really thought that the, the offensive and defensive lines kind of control the way things happen. Well, they did for a time, Bruce, but any time you got uh, talent on the field like both of these teams have, something's going to break loose. I, You know, this third quarter about to kick off here, Coach Green is pacing that sideline like a caged lion. I'll tell you, if his team is as ready to play as he is, it's going to be a knocker. How, how important is it, Sonny, for Carroll to put something on the board at the start of the second half with this opening drive to put some points, even if it's just a field goal? Well, if it happens early, it will be very important. Um, the way this game has gone, there hasn't been anything given up real easily. I can't, I can't see anybody scoring real quick here, but... Uh, I've been wrong before. What year was that? <laughs> Once a day. <laughs> well, we're set to go. Chris Kasney will kick off for the ore diggers of Montana Tech. Garafa and Wall, both with outstanding speed, are back deep for the Fighting Saints. See our quarterbacks warming up on the sideline. And the kickoff's going to come down to Nick Garafa. A freshman out of Billing Central, and he's hit and stopped as he crosses the 20-yard line. What a great kickoff that was, Bruce. That ball had air under it. It took a long time to come down, allowed that coverage to get downfield underneath it. And uh, now they're putting the ball in play on about, what, the 20-yard line. Uh, that was great kickoff coverage by a great kickoff, period. Emmert stays in at quarterback. And they'll have it first and 10 on their own 21-yard line. Just underway here, second half from Alumni Coliseum. Bruce Parker along with Sonny Holland, Dean Conklin, Ron Davis, and Gene McNulty-King from uh, the homecoming contest for the Ore Diggers of Montana State, and they lead it 14 to 10. We've got a double slot here, Bruce. They're re-spreading the field. Um, just the ball poorly thrown at his feet there, but it looks like uh, in that first play the, the Saints are coming out trying to spread the field, spread out the defense. Thursday Night Football, a Saturday edition, is brought to you in part by Wayland Tire. Service first, quality always. Throughout Montana, it's Wayland Tire. So, yeah, just a poorly thrown ball there because the King had some room to run on first down. That'll bring up now second down and 10. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about uh, how important this first drive if, is for momentum. No team has really grabbed it in this one. Justin Thomas, the top receiver for Carroll College, is spit wide to the right side. Carroll now. Carroll comes back on the screen, the wide receiver screen, and it's snuffed out nicely there. Making the play was John Croston, the 5'11 senior out of Clyde Park, Montana, from his outside linebacker spot. Dean, he's played pretty well here in this one. Well, we've also seen uh, with, with Travis Hedick that combination. They, they're into a three-man front, which puts a lot of pressure on the backers. They have to play. The outside backers are almost like defensive ends, and uh, Tech has four good backers. Hedick now is uh, on the left side. Let's wait and see if he moves on. Now he's going to go almost in the middle from a stand-up position. Now he goes down into a three-point. On 
Third down and long. Emmert rolling to his right. As the ball passed off, I don't uh, believe it's enough for the first down. It isn't. It's incomplete. And uh, let's uh, talk with J.D. Emmert, the man who played here last year for Montana Tech. Brings up fourth down and eight. Carroll College has always had really good connections with Capital. They've been really good to us, financial-wise, academically, athletic scholarships, things like that. Two, and uh, I, I tried to leave in town for a few years and ended up transferring back here, and there's nothing better than the Helena fans. So. so the punt now will come from uh, Jordan Sermon. End over end kick to Steve Halco. Nice, gets a nice block. Halco now cuts back to his left, now back to his right. But good coverage by Carroll College. Was there to make the stop was Jake Slingsby, the offensive tackle out of Florence, Montana. We're going to hold things right here with a 14-10 lead and good field position to start the second half for Montana Tech. Well, good, uh, good defense by the Tech or diggers there in that first series. They uh, three downs and out and puts the ball in the center of the field. Good field position for Montana Tech starting this drive. And they have it uh, just shy of the 50-yard line on the 49, first and 10. Bounce now is uh, changing the play up just a little bit. On first down. And when Tech scored, they scored quickly. The pitch goes off this time to Justin Johnson, the 5'9 freshman out of Frenchtown, Montana, carrying the ball for the first time this afternoon. Looked like the Ordeggers took a page out of the playbook of the Saints there and that speed option going down the line with Kane Clown. You know, Bruce, I don't know what it is. The fact that he's 6'3", 220 or what it is, but he he just is an impressive young man standing behind the center there as a quarterback. Mike Van Deese said if he had him, he'd make a linebacker out of him. Well, I think he could play a lot of places. Maybe defensive tackle. He's just an imposing athlete. And it's handed off to Johnson again. And he'll have a first down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Justin Johnson gets the first down yardage, but the flag is dropped. And I think this one's going to go against the Ore Diggers as they're taking the long walk back. And the call is made. So uh, first down was picked up by Johnston, but uh, Ryan Perry, the wide receiver, was out there trying to block downfield, and he probably is the guy who got the attention of the official. And he didn't look very happy. On his knees. After the play, no, that's true. So it's going to be second down now after the gain and where the penalty was uh, flag was thrown. Second down now, and let's call it eight for Montana Tech. Penalty brings up second down and eight for the order. We'll see what uh, Kane Clouch could do. Renzi Kelly coming back into the football game. Along with Jess Holman, a wide receiver. Defensively for the Saints here, there's a big challenge. They're at midfield, second down. This is a big play in this series. They shut them down here. They got to throw the football for the first down. In motion is Holman. Ryan Perry is split wide to the right side. Kenzie uh, Kelly to the left. Clouch slips a little bit, but he does get the ball off to Perry. And Perry gets uh, yardage into Carroll territory, but it's not going to be enough for the first down. So we will have a third down call here now for Carroll Col or for Montana Tech. We saw Travis Honor, defensive back for Carroll College. So it's third down and a long two for the Ore Diggers. As the ball at about the 43-yard line for the Ore Digger football squad. Johnson now the lone setback. Halco split wide to the left side. To the right is Renzi Kelly. The motion man is Holman. And a flag's going to go down. It's going to probably be offsides against Carroll College. It's good for the first down. And we'll further downfield than wherever they got with the rush. You see the referee, one of the fine Frontier Conference uh, officials. They are going to say it's offsides against the Fighting Saints of Carroll College. So that'll mark it five yards for Montana Tech. And we'll be able to see the movement. A lot of this, uh, you can give a lot of the credit on this uh, to the quarterback with his cadence. So 
So it's first down now for Montana Tech, leading at 14-10, just underway here in the second half. 11.44 left, third quarter. From a Chile Alumni Coliseum, it's homecoming 99 for Montana Tech, and they have the 14-10 lead. Emmerich still throwing the football along with Martinson on the sideline for Carroll College. Bounce now will go back to throw the football. He has a man wide open. It's Halco. Halco makes the reception. Touchdown. That was floated up in the air. It was not a line drive. It was a nice float. It was a little bit uh, behind Halco, but uh, he was deep enough that he puts the score on the board, and Tech draws first blood in the second half. Well, he just feathered that football and let that receiver run under it. That was a fine execution by the quarterback and the receiver there. Good protection by the offensive front. You know, that defensive front for the Carroll Saints is pretty young. They got two sophomores, a freshman, and a senior lining up there for them. And uh, they're young, but they're tough. Kasney now will attempt the extra point. The touchdown comes at the 11-31 mark. Helen a high Bengal. His kick is up and good. 11.31 left from Alumni Coliseum. The Ore Diggers lead it 21-10. Your score with 11.31 to go in the third quarter. 42-yard attempt. Sullivan could be the hero or the goat here. There's the snap. The spot is down. The kick is up. Long enough. Hey, Uncle Bruce, you gonna watch us on TV tomorrow? Three Rivers Wireless is proud to help make it possible for all of our Montana athletes to get their chance to be a star on TV. Get connected. Celebrate 2000. What's exciting about the new millennium? Draw first blood in the second half as the 43-yard touchdown pass from Clouch to Steve Halco. And the 21-10 lead for the Ore Diggers and a very nicely thrown ball. Set uh, Kasney will kick off for the Ore Diggers. 11:31 left here in the second or third quarter. Bruce Parker along with Sonny Holland and Dean Conklin and our sideline duo of Ron Davis and Gene McNulty King. Kasney will kick deep to Garafa and Keith Wall, and it's a high end over end kick down to about the three yard line. Nick Garafa hit once, still on his feet, and gets up close to the 20-yard line plus. Ryan. And uh, just a nice throw from Clouch to Halco. So it's going to be first down and 10 as Nick Martins come in at quarterback for... <laughs> Carroll College, his first uh, first appearance of the afternoon, has been the starter most of the season. Emmert did a nice job in that uh, first half, but Martinson comes back in, a transfer out of New York military. New Mexico military? New Mexico military. I don't know if there are any militaries in New York except for the rest of the world. And we're going to take a look at that touchdown on the pass from Kane Clouch to Steve Halco. You can really get a good look at Kane Clouch here, stepping up, throwing over that front foot, putting the air, air under the football, right in stride to Halco in the end zone. Halco's knee may be down before the ball crossed over to the goal line. You know, we saw again on the kickoff here, Bruce, uh, a great kickoff, high and deep, and the coverage puts Carroll deep in their own territory, a long ways the end zone. Martinson got two yards on first down. This time he gets it off to Justin Thomas. And Thomas is hit as he catches the football by Don McLean, the sophomore out of Flathead High School in Kalispell, Montana. We're down on the sidelines, we're going to go to Ron Davis. Well, thanks, guys. We're back here on the sides of Bob Toshoff. He's the president of the Digger Athletic Association. And Montana Tech's boosters are the number one fundraisers in NAIA year after year. How do you do it, Bob? Well, we have a 26-member uh, board, and we have approximately 450 to 500 uh, good uh, customers in, in the area that, uh, and good businesses that uh, join the association. And we have an auction in the fall. We have uh, uh, go several golf tournaments, and that brings in our $250,000, $260,000 a year. That's number one in the nation for NAIA right here at Montana Tech. 
Thanks, Ron. Mike Morris on the carry on third down and short gets the first down as the ball up close uh, to the 43-yard line for the Fighting Saints of Carroll College. Good job. Morris had a good first half rushing the football, and there he gets some good yardage on third down. 9.50 in the clock running here in the third quarter. Left from Alumni Coliseum. Morris, the lone setback with the quarterback, Nick Martinson. Martinson now is going to air it out and go down the field to Carroll. The ball thrown out of bounds. Good coverage there by Haynes. Curtis Haynes was right there. That's the second time they've tried to do an out and an up. This one thrown out of bounds, but that's something that Carroll... Uh, apparently found that they, they thought they had the opportunity to go deep. Nick Martinson, 6'3", 200-pound junior out of Pace in Utah, came into the ball game uh, 34 of 64 for about 53%, had five touchdown passes and three interceptions. Also could run the football, very uh, adept at running the option and uh, moving the ball around either end. Martinson now will go from the shotgun on second down and 10. A high snap, and he's just going to try to step up and run the ball. He gets up, uh, gets a couple yards. Martinson on the keeper for the Saints. You know, that uh, obviously was a broken play caused by a bad right snap. Now by number 35, was, uh, for the I'm not sure what was up there in that call, but uh, here down. again, Thanks lucky uh, he was able to feel that football. Kent that Bruce, that Kent defense Bruce makes the front, stop. excuse me. Dean, that defensive front is high and wide for Montana Tech. And I'll tell you, when they when they put a charge on the passer and get their hands up, they're tough to throw over. Third down long, third and seven for Carroll College. Martinson under center. Center Jason Gilliam. Martinson now is going to be pressured in the backfield, tries to get rid of it, and I think they're going to say he threw the ball. Travis Hedick. Yeah, Travis Hedick was there. Bert King was the intended uh, receiver, but he was a long ways away from the football. But Hedick uh, there makes his presence known. He battled the right the right tackle as he penetrated from the left side. And after he got past him, there was another offensive lineman there ready to, to give him a bounce. But Hedick was able to reach out in his hands on Martins. I think they've been doubling up on him, Dean, quite a bit all afternoon. And... Uh, but there again, great players make great plays. Jordan Sermon, the punter, and the deep man is Steve Halco. Halco puts up his hands with a semi-attempt at a fair catch, and that's where the ore diggers will take it first and 10 when we come back. 8.37 left, third quarter. Tech on top, 21-10. Here's will start uh, on their own 16-yard line after the punt from Carroll College as Clouch now will bring his team out, starting deep in their own territory. Trips to the right side, they're going to give the ball off to Jay LaProuse. And Jay is smothered at the line of scrimmage. For a very short game. There you see Martinson on the bench for Carroll College. Take a look at that knee, maybe a little bursa sack problem. Eight minutes, 15 seconds left in the third quarter. And we're going to say a gain of three for LaProuse as he just lunged forward. A lot of uh, LaProuse's efforts come on second effort, Sonny, as uh, he just doesn't stop. Well, he's a go-go guy, and he never gives up with that football. As long as the feet are under him, he's uh, dangerous. There you see the bucket cam shot of Keen Clouch in the offense for Montana Tech. And here comes Jay LaProuse. He's open. Across midfield, Travis Honor did a nice job of closing on LaProuse and made him kind of hold up. And what a nice job LaProuse did of cutting off of Ryan Perry's downfield block. There were two defenders in, in pursuit, and LaProuse made a, a great cut off the block. He just sees things really well, Dean. Um, he's a good back, has got great peripheral vision, and uh, certainly he sees what's going on. He tries to make use of every block and uh, manages to get another four or five yards right at the end of the play. Jay LaProuse having the biggest, uh, his biggest game of the season, 40 yards on that carry. And the Ore Diggers have it first down and 10 uh, on the 43 yard line in Carroll College territory. The option, Clouch. Keeps the football, gets a couple. Joe Horn, initially there for Carroll College. 
That, that play is designed, Bruce, is uh, technically amongst the coaching circles called the speed option, and he just comes right down the line of scrimmage and just challenges that defensive end to come after him. He's ready to pitch. They don't take him. He's going to turn up the field and make a big play out of it. So it's second down now and seven for Montana Tech. Holman and Halco go out to the left side. Renzi Kelly to the right side. Kelly to the left. The lone setback is Jayla Prowse. And they're going to swing it off quickly to Jess Holman. Holman still on his feet before he's knocked down after a gain of a couple. That pass that uh, was just completed there looks real easy. But I'm telling you, in coaching, that's, that's one of the most difficult technique passes for a quarterback to master. That little swing pass where the, where the receiver is kind of flaring out, losing a yard or two, and, and the quarterback's got to put it right on the money. He can't, uh, he can't be off even a little bit. And that was well done again by Mr. Clowns. Third down, four for the Ore Diggers. In motion is Steve Halco, who caught that touchdown pass here in the third quarter. And they throw the screen off, and uh, LaCrosse uh, really wasn't even turned around yet, so that'll bring up a fourth down for Montana Tech. I think Pinkerton got his hands on it. He, he made a dive and came close to picking it off. Here's an interesting uh, halftime activity. Kelly Kuzmal the starting uh, left tackle for Montana Tech was the homecoming king. He was in the locker room, didn't give a chance to make that trip around the field in the pink Cadillac. And the homecoming queen, his wife, Karen Jolly Kuzmal. And if you watched uh, Monday Night Basketball last year, you know she plays for the Lady Ore Diggers of Montana Tech. The punt by Jay LaProuse going for that end zone. It carried a little bit, goes into the end zone. And that's where Carroll College will take over first and 10 on their own 20 yard line. We'll come back with the final 554 of the third quarter and much more. Montana Tech on top. Well, there we see Coach Mike Van Deest uh, directing his defense, talking with Chuck Hader, one of his defensive ends out of Billings Central High School in Billings, Montana. And it's first and 10, and J.D. Emmert has come back into the game for Carroll College, and with 5.44 left, they take over on their own 20, and here comes Heath Wall. You know, I'm a little surprised, Sonny, at the end of the success that Carroll has had running the football against a very good defensive front by, uh, of Montana Tech, but boy, they have really put some, uh, some yards up on the ground. They have. They pop them up the middle there every now and then, uh, which we'll see here. Take a good look at this. Good block. The fullback got a great block there. And uh, we've seen Mr. Wall before. He's a good man with the football. Bert King now and Thomas will split wide to the right side, to the left for Carroll College. I believe it's Nick Carroll. Let's wait. You know, uh, take that back. Uh, we're going to go down to Ron Davis, and then we'll make, uh, make amends for that last call. Ron? Well, you know, Bruce, the uh, big thing out here for Travis Heddock, as you said in the first half, he was being controlled by Landon Lamb. Uh, he and Landon uh, is a guy out of Malta, Montana, who is doing a great job on the other side. Now they moved Heddock to the left side of the defense, and he's been getting a little bit done over there, but Lamb did a great job controlling him in the first half. Carroll was really pleased, but Heddock is now stepping up. That was Casey Fitzsimmons that went out to the left side. So now it's second down and about two for Carroll College. Emmert hands off to Morris, and he's not going any anywhere. There's our a, man, Mr. Hedick. He is, he's he's making his presence known eight. here in the second half. He came on a slant charge, took the ball carry, and was ready to take the quarterback as well. Anybody who was in the area. He just destroyed the handoff. White jersey. That offensive lineman released down inside of him. He just put his head in his hip pocket, and he was there at the handoff. So uh, no gain, maybe a loss of one. Call it third down three for Carroll College. The ball sitting just shy of the 44-yard line in Carroll territory. Emmert now has Heath Wall in the backfield along with Mike Morris. Again, the speed option, and the speed option is slowed considerably by the Tech defensive line. Close to the first down, though. Mr. Hedick. No. Nope. Making the tackle there, and it's going to be fourth down for Carroll College, and they're going to bring in the punting team as Jordan Sermon will come back in for another punt attempt. Halco going deep for Montana Tech. Probably a good safe call here early in the uh, second half. 
Good snap, important here. Uh, punter kicking into a pretty stiff breeze. I think that wind could have a little effect on the football. And the snap is good to Sermon. It's a nice kickoff. Halco has to backpedal a little bit. Looking for some blocks. He has the wall set up. Halco outside, and he'll be knocked down. And a flag comes flying in. Could be a block in the back. Yeah, I think we might have a clip there. Jason Petrino down on the other sideline and gets up uh, holding kind of his arm. But he's going to stay in that huddle. Petrino made the stop for Carroll College. And uh, looks like the penalty is going to go against Montana Tech. Sermon's last two kicks, both of them into the wind, have been pretty good kicks. Sermon, a uh, freshman out of Idaho Falls, Idaho, Skyline High School. You called it there, Bruce. It was a block in the back. Well, that'll march it back with 3.03 left here in the third quarter. And Tech on top, 21-10. The They'll have the football. And uh, as we mentioned, the temperature has dropped uh, considerably here in the second half. On a gray October afternoon. Sonny, you look to be staying warm. It looks like you have a down sleeping bag on. <laughs> I got all the clothes <laughs> on I brought. We're sitting uh, right behind the Carroll sidelines. Great view of this football game. Clouch now. Kelly split wide to the left side. And the drop play goes off to LaProuse. He has to fight to get back to the original line of scrimmage. We'll try to check yardage on Jay LaProuse. He's had a very good afternoon. And there you see, there you see our, our own private press box on the uh, Alumni Coliseum sidelines. You call this a good, clean mountain air, right? <laughs> Wind's picked up uh, just a little bit here in the second half, but uh, no sun now. 21 car or 20 carries for 201 yards for Jay LaProuse. Pretty good afternoon. He was already leading the conference in rushing coming into this game. On second down and five. Another draw goes off to LaProuse, and he's going to have first down yardage as he just churns the feet. Uh, 91 carries for 407 yards coming into the ball game with three touchdowns for LaProuse, averaging about 81 yards, a little bit over 81 yards a game. And... Uh, He'll be close to 100-yard average after this one this afternoon. Well, he's a stocky guy, Bruce. He's got a real set of pins under him. He's well-muscled, big shoulders. Really takes on tacklers well. Sean Lowry up in the bucket cam. I'm not going to say anything about being cold because he's up a lot higher than we are. Clouch now off to LaProuse once again, and he didn't get the first down, but he does this time. As he goes over the... Uh, 33, 34 yard line. So it'll be a first and 10. But Caleb Zimmerman was there with a nice block leading the way for LaProuse. You know, at this point in time, Bruce, we're closing down this third quarter, another minute and 36 seconds. Uh, Montana Tech moving the chains. They're up by 11. Carroll's got to score twice. Sonny, the, the adage is what happens in the first five minutes of the second half is really important. Carroll's defense wasn't able to stop the Rocky, uh, the Tech offense. Tech was able to stop Carroll's offense, and that was when we got the only score so far in the second half. Clouch now going long on first down, and no flag is thrown. Fans wanted to go in there. Says the ball would have was too far away. If if we saw that play on replay. I think we would see the receiver, the offensive receiver, did a little, did a little shove off. Well, can't really see it there, but you can see the ball going well over the head of the receiver. The fans thought it should have been interference, but I kind of tend to lean with the officials there. I think they made a pretty good call. You're not saying that as the former commissioner, are you, Sonny? Coach Green doesn't feel that way, <laughs> however. <laughs> I'll tell you, he is the Ore Diggers' biggest cheerleader. We saw Coach Green had a chance to talk to him before the game. Uh, he's intent, as intense as any player on the field today. Oh, look at that. Renzi Kelly had a chance to go all the way. A nice job of stopping things from Nick Perini out of Helena Capital. But uh, Clouch 
to Renzi Kelly. And on the, on the play, 46 yards and a first down for the ore diggers. Uh, you can see Mr. Clown standing tall back there, and uh, given time, he can he can put it on the money, and he hit Renzi right in stride there. And it was a great run, great effort, and uh, it was a great effort by the defensive back to stop him from going in the end zone. We saw a great play by Renzi Kelly when we were down at Western. It was a kickoff return or a punt return, and Renzi caught up with the, with the guy, and he punched the ball out, and Western lost the ball. Tech recovered the ball. One of those plays you see on the NFL occasionally where the player intentionally knocks the ball out of the out of the uh, hands of the ball carrier, and Renzi did a great job of it. Well, Prowse gets a tough, couple tough yards on first down. As we mentioned, LaProuse over 200 yards this afternoon. 27, 26, 25 seconds left here in the third quarter with the Ore Diggers on top. There you see Coach Green working the sidelines. Talking with Renzi Kelly on the sideline. You get the ball in here now, Coach Green, and uh, things are kind of going your way going into the fourth quarter if they end up scoring here. And that's going to let the clock run down. That's going to be it for our third quarter. Montana Tech leading Carroll College 21 10. Lots of excitement left in the fourth quarter. Stay with us. Edition, or this Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football is brought to you in part by TCI, the digital cable company, TCI Cablevision. We're set to go with the first play of the fourth quarter. Montana Tech with the football, second down nine, the ball on the 19-yard line for the Ore Diggers. Bounce now on the reverse to Halco. Defense fairly well by Carroll College. That's kind of a slow developing reverse, Bruce. They're counting on people uh, over pursuing, which Carroll Col College is good at flying to the football, but they were able to recover fairly well on that, re on that reverse. Uh, it did pick up a couple yards. Interesting to note, Bruce, in the third quarter, the time of possession again was fairly close, only a minute separating. Uh, Tech had the ball eight minutes and five seconds, and the Saints had it just under seven minutes. So. Still fairly close. Couple on second down for the Ore Diggers. Now third down and six for Montana Tech. As the ball is now in the 16 yard line. Ruley in motion. Ball handed off to Jayla Prouse. Right side. And a flag. Let's wait and see what the call is on third down. It's against it's, Tech. It's gonna go back. Uh, Montana Tech now is gonna have the penalty. Red zone penalties, uh, not uh, not very impressive they, with coaches. They kill you. They kill you. They'll, down, they'll hear about that come practice Monday afternoon. Down on the sidelines to Gene McNulty-King. Thanks, Bruce. One of the great things about being down on the sideline is you get to hear the coach's strategy. And right now, Coach Van Dees keeps telling the team to run the Raven, the Omaha, and the Raven. And it's real important that the, the kids get back on the Raven and the Omaha. What all this means, I have no idea, but I thought it sounded pretty good. Bruce? <laughs> Thanks, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of birds to me. But it's worked pretty well for Coach Van Dees. And now it's going to bring up a third down and 16 after the penalty marched off against the Ore Diggers. 13.58, the clock running there. You see Clouch, the quarterback, who's had a good ball game this afternoon. Boy, some good quarterbacks in the Frontier Conference. We've seen them today from both schools. You gotta throw in Mr. Short. Chris Jackson playing very well for MSU Northern. Uh, just a, a good league of quarterbacks. Clouch now gets it off to Kelly. Kelly, I think, uh, makes the catch, but I don't think it's good enough for first down. Clouch did a good job of looking off the defense. He was looking to the left and then quickly turn to the right, hit Kelly. Now the decision to see, it looks like they're gonna send Chris Kasney into the field to attempt a field goal. That reception did put them in position for a good uh, opportunity at a field goal. Uh, they were out there quite a distance. Maybe 26 yard kick. Right, this Not much them, more, than, it would be like an extra point with a penalty. Give them a better chance going against this breeze. He's got to hit the ball well. From the 21, we'll call it a 31-yard field goal for Montana Tech. Kasney, good snap. The ball put down. The kick is up, and it's wide left at the distance. So the Carroll defense holds with 12.48 left. A little bit of a, a momentum switch for Carroll. We're going to keep things right here. The Ore Diggers leading it by 11, but Carroll's offense comes back out into the field 
and a little bit of fire on the sideline from Carroll College. This is Sergeant Gary Becker with Montana Highway Patrol. Well, I'll tell you. A good receiver after catching a football tries to avoid contact while running to the end zone. Sometimes driving can be as tough as football. You and your family trying to avoid contact with others en route to your destination. And be sure to wear your seatbelt. Football players won't play without a helmet. You shouldn't drive without a seatbelt. Have a safe trip. Our safety message, and Justin Thomas uh, takes that safety message to heart with his helmet and uh, drives forward to get some pretty good yardage. We appreciate our, all of our support from our law enforcement officers around the state here with uh, this Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football. Well, Carroll College saying, you run reverse, we'll run, run one also. Here we come back. You see the reverse coming fairly deep to Justin Thomas, and he breaks the tackle there with a good spin-around technique, stays on his feet, gets upfield, moves the chains. First down for Carroll College, 12.38 left. They have the football right on the 30-yard line in their own territory. J.D. Emmert is the quarterback. Rick Fusi comes wide to the left side, along with Burt King. On first down, Emmert goes over the middle to Thomas. He bobbles the football, but still comes down with it. Picks up some good yardage on first down. Down on the sidelines to Mr. Davis. Hey, guys, you know what? This is that great, it's an academic poster for the Montana Power Company. You see it here. Charlie Ordiger, the Montana Tech Ordiger booth uh, mascot holding it here. Matt Moore in costume today. This poster is available by uh, at any school for $5. The money goes to the different schools, as you see, the different mascots in a distance watching the game down on the field, and the game's been watched all over the state. It's academic as a poster. You can get it at your local school for $5. The proceeds go into the schools around Montana. Second down now, four for Carroll College. Thanks, Ron. As Emmert now looks over the area, and it's to Carroll. A good throw. Carroll can't hold on. So that'll bring up now a third down and about four for the Fighting Saints. Well, he put that ball in the money, Bruce. He just couldn't hang on to it. Uh, can't help it. Uh, fingers be a little cold right now as the temperature has dropped a good 15 degrees in the last hour or so. Burt King was running a deeper route, about eight or 10 yards deeper, and he was open as well. King has just come out of the ball game. So Emmert now will go from the shotgun. He has Morris, the lone setback in the Fighting Saints backfield. On third down, lots of time for J.D. Emmert. The ball thrown over the middle. Let's wait and see where they spot the football. I don't think it's going to be close to that first down. Good hit there by Don McLean, Kalispell, 6'1, 194. Sophomore. You're going to mark it back. Shy of first down yardage. Here you see the receiver take a good shot. Uh, knocks him backward. His knee touches the ground. So it's fourth and five. Punt formation. Jordan Sermon again in to punt. Steve Halko back deep for the Ore Diggers. Flag is thrown. I think that's going to be a motion flag. The tech, tech defensive line forced some movement on the Carroll side of the ball, but given how short this punt was, probably take the kick. I'd say they refuse that penalty. Let's wait and see. The penalty's declined. We're going to take a break. 10.47 left. Fourth quarter. Tech on top, 21-10. There you see the Carroll sideline. King Clouch with the football. First and 10 for Montana Tech. Halco, the motion man for the Ore Diggers. And again, it's Mr. LaPraus as he busts up for a couple. King Clouch has had an outstanding game and a great season. We talked to him before the game. Oh, it was fun. You know, they're a Division One team, but you know, they're no different than the other team. We came here and practice again, practice for them all week long. We came on, played, played them tough. In the second half, we just didn't come out and execute our plays as we did in the first half, and we got beat. But you know, until then, we were playing them tough, just like any other team that we have played against before. 
Kane talking about last weekend's game with Southern Utah, a team that had just come off a victory on the road over McNeese State, ranked seventh in the country. Montana Tech jumped to a 12-0 lead, trailed at half, or was leading at half 12-10 and lost the game to the Division I AA T-Birds, 30-12. A great performance for the Ordinators. Bounce now with the football all alone in the middle. And he had a receiver deep again who was open. Jess Holman couldn't uh, hang on, but Ryan Perry, as Dean mentioned, was wide open downfield. That was a touchdown. And it'll bring up a third down for the Ore Diggers. The ball on their own 42-yard line with 9.55 left here. There you see Travis Honor, the defensive back for Carroll College, Coach Mike Van Deest. The crowd sticking with everybody here in this close one, 21-10. Carroll College Fighting Saints being their own cheerleader. They're uh, chanting for their defense to make a big play. This is a big play in this series. Over the motion man. Klaus now is going to hand off to LaProuse. LaProuse was going to go outside, but uh, that area was snuffed by Chuck Hader. And LaProuse does get up uh, close to the 45-yard line, but he's going to be short of the first down, so that'll force the Ordiggers to bring in the punting team. Jay LaProuse will be the punter, Honor will be the deep man, and there you see Jay Pinkerton, who got banged up a little bit early in the ball game, but has played very well here in this one when he came back in. I'll tell you, when Jay LaProuse pops a sweat early in the ball game, he never gets a break. He's in there on all the action. Here we see him punting the football against the wind. And he gets off a dandy. Good punt. Honor now will make the catch and try to get some yards. Tough yards as he was swarmed under by about six or seven. Or diggers. 9-10 left. Montana Tech still leads it in Frontier Conference football. here in the second half that uh, the long pass play from Kane Clouch to Halco the wide receiver but Carroll has the football first and ten the ball on their own 24 yard line Emmert who's gone most of the way at the quarterback for Carroll College still on his feet trying to get some yardage he'll stay in bounds and be knocked down shy of the first down and uh, Ron Davis on the sideline uh, Sonny and Dean you guys had a great opportunity to be in uh, lame deer for six man football uh, last Thursday night it was, it was a lot of fun, Bruce, as uh, we, we had to count a lot of players. You know, it was a lot easier doing six-man ball because you didn't have to keep uh, track of people. But, Sonny, as you know, we were so busy chasing players around the field because they moved so darn fast. Well, I'll tell you, that uh, football field was like heavy traffic on I-90. They were from one end to the other. We see one of the big plays here, and it was fast and furious all night. You see that ball carry get tipped upside down by a fine hit from the Belfry Bats. It was going for a for a one-point conversion. And he did a 360, so he got, I think he got 9.7 by the judges. <laughs> there should have been a score for the hit as well. <laughs> Emmert completes the pass to Nick Carroll, and it's good for a Carroll first down. As the clock now becoming a factor at 8 minutes, 17 seconds left here from Alumni Coliseum. Homecoming for Montana Tech, 1999. Carroll could get on the board here, Bruce. They'd be right back in this football game. It's, uh, it's a pretty uh, critical series offensively for the Saints. Morris in motion, high snap. And the ball is just thrown through the hands of Justin Thomas on the uh, wide receiver screen. That, was, that, that pass was the result, I think, of the bad snap. The quarterback had to jump to try to reach the ball and tried to throw it, qu uh, tried to throw it quickly. Bad snap, bad throw, bad play. The incomplete, incomplete pass stops the clock at about 7.56. Here we'll take a look at that snap, and it does throw all the timing off on this play. Emmert does a nice job of coming down with it. You know, it's interesting, uh, that offensive center snapped that football without looking. I never had the courage to do that. I always had to look where I was going to snap the football. Emmert now across the middle, Nick Ooh, Carroll there. Hit. Good hit, but he holds on to the football. He was popped there uh, on a pretty nice defensive play by Tyler Cotton. And Co Cotton's had a couple of those today. He has, Bruce. He's a good hitter, and you see him stick it right in there on this uh, reception coming from a safety position. He puts his headgear right in there. It's a real good hit. The receiver did a great job hanging on to the football, and Carroll's in their territory marching. First and 10 for the Fighting Saints. It's a movement on the line, and his pass is complete to Thomas. No, he's knocked, uh, it's knocked out of his hands. 
And Good of job of stripping the ball. So that'll bring up a second down and 10. And they're going uh, with the no huddle. Here's the pass from Emmert. Ball's very well thrown, and it's just a well great caught. defensive uh, shot there. Managed to get a hand on the football and knock it loose. Emmert to Burt King. King makes a nifty move. Breaks the tackle. All right, Bruce, this is just what the doctor ordered for the Saints. They need to get on the board, and they're doing just that. We do have a flag. Let's wait and see where the, the penalty goes. It looks like Carroll's marching backwards. It's one you haven't seen, you don't see very often, illegal use of hands. Offensively. Offensively against Carroll College. And the big play is nullified by the penalty. We've seen that a couple times today with uh, impressive uh, plays brought back because of the hanky. Looks like a spot foul, Bruce. They, they penalized them from the spot of the foul, so the foul occurred someplace in the secondary downfield about eight to 10 yards. It'll be second and six now for Carroll. That's the first time that King has had his hands on the football this afternoon. He did make a nice move there and avoided a tackler. Got the ball down there in scoring position. 5'7", 162, junior out of Haver, Montana. Emmert now, this time to Nick Carroll again. And he's ripped down, I think, with enough for a first down for the Fighting Saints. On the, moving the chain. On the tackle there was Jess Schwartzrock. Defensive back out of Plentywood, Montana. You know, here we see a ball really well thrown. Receiver picking it up and uh, getting the first down. You know, Bruce, I missed that uh, Saints fighting band that we were, were sitting in front of us when we were up there in Helena a couple weeks ago. And they played that when the Saints go marching in about 100 times that night, I think. Well, they're marching now. So a timeout is called, and we're going to keep things here with seven minutes and seven seconds left in the fourth quarter, and Montana Tech on top, as you see, by 11. Been a, uh, both teams have moved the football in the second half, but uh, the lone touchdown came on that touchdown pass from Kane Clouch to Steve Halco on the first possession of the second half by the Ordiggers. The interesting thing will be if Carroll goes in and scores, whether Tech is going to try to play conservatively and eat up clock, or if they're going to be a little bit aggressive and try to move the ball down the field and, and uh, see if they can do something themselves. So it's first and 10 for the Fighting Saints. The ball sitting on the 30-yard line in Montana Tech territory. On first down, Emmert from the shotgun. Pumps once, now goes to the end zone. Carroll's open. Just overthrown. Nick Carroll had a couple steps on the defensive back for Montana Tech. That defensive back was Josh Norburn, but the ball just out of the outstretched hands of the wide receiver. Second down and 10 now for Carroll College. Stops the clock on the incomplete pass at 7.01 left. 21-10, Montana Tech leading it. There you see Emmert from the bucket camp. And from the shotgun with Morris the lone setback. Lots of time left in this one. Emmert finds Justin Thomas open on the sideline, on the Carroll sideline. Real close to first down. Pass and a flag is thrown. And it's going to go against Carroll College. Boy, Sonny, just a couple tough penalties against Carroll College that have really hurt them here on this drive. Well, these are big penalties, two of them, Bruce. Uh, balls in scoring position, and this one stops stops the first down, puts them in real tough uh, position now to get that first down. Looks like second and a ton. Mike Van Deest not very happy on the sidelines. 
buy one of those striped shirts. Ultimately, somebody's not going to be happy with you during the game. That's right. So now it's second down and long, second down 22. Katie Emmert now quickly off to Nick Carroll. Carroll busts through, still on his feet. Oh, boy. Just a nice job there by Nick Carroll. He's going to be close to first down yardage. Then he make a nice move there with the football. Put himself in position now. But he's got a chance for a first down. Watch this. Uh, Carroll make a move and uh, clear himself of those two tacklers right there. Now he's downfield for a possible first down. And Shane Baird is there to make the play. Third down, three. Maybe three and a half for Carroll College. We're joined in our booth now by Ron Davis. And on third down, Heath Wall will get the pitch. Tanner Egan there with a great stop, and he's stepping up from that linebacker position. He came in and stuffed it quick, Bruce. I think he's going to be short of the first down. They're going to hold, they're going to say it is fourth down. Fourth and one. Now it is four down yardage for territory for Carroll College. Trailing 21-10 with the clock running at 5.50 left here in the fourth quarter. There you see uh, big Mr. Egan out of Great Falls High School. 6'2", 226 senior. And the crowd now starting to get into it here at Alumni Coliseum. I like the speed option here, Bruce. Let's see what uh, Mr. Emmer's going to do. Fourth down and two, the play of the game for Carroll College. Oh, my God. He goes right back to his tight end. Ball well thrown. And in two, game, work. In two games, Sonny, that's the first reception we've seen for Fitzsimmons uh, today. He was a factor in our first ball game with Carroll, but Fitzsimmons out of Chester, Montana. Good. Good tight end. You know, this is a good call, Sonny, because you have the diggers all laying back on their heels, the secondary's back, because Emmert's been going long on them all afternoon here in the second half. So dump it short to your tight end. And it is a first down with 5.20 left. 21-10, Tech on top. Carroll marching the ball downfield. Emmert under center. Pump fakes once, now it's going to be rushed, gets out of it. He could go in. And he's crushed inside the five yard, or right at the five yard line. Good solid hit by linebacker Kent Boos, a junior 6'3", 241 from Glasgow, Montana. And they're gonna say he's down at about the six yard line and we'll have some tape of that one. But a good job by Emmert to make a decision to tuck it up and run. Watch Mr. Bose come in there and put the hit on Emmert. Didn't see it very well, but that was a tough hit. Tanner Egan also now, there. 18 for 38, throwing the football. Down in scoring position. First down, goal to goal from the five yard line for Carroll College to Heath Wall. Travis Hedick right there as he comes down the line and they're gonna get a couple yards on him. You know, the one thing the Saints have done a good job of in the second half is getting the ball through the air and getting a moving, Bruce, and that has opened up the running up the middle, and, and they're taking advantage of it here down close. Carroll has done a good job running the football. I see on the Carroll sideline now, talking with uh, the kicker, Petrino, is Coach Mike Van Deese, talking about what they want to do on this kickoff if uh, Carroll can get in the end zone. Again, this time now to Morris. Morris cuts it in. No call yet. And I think they're going to say he stopped short of the goal line. Just inside the one-yard line. So it'll bring up third down and goal now for Carroll College. A must touchdown is what they're looking for in this place. Trailing now by 11. You look over on the far sideline, the Diggers offense is all huddled up behind Coach Bob Green and they're talking about doing some clock control, I'm sure right now. We see Petrino over near the kicking net, it's gonna practice a little bit. Inside, no call yet. Usually that means no touchdown. So they're gonna look for a timeout. With 3.44, the clock now stopped. Carroll does call timeout. Good defense there by Montana Tech. We're going to take a break, come back with our final 3.44. Tech on top by 11. Third on the scoreboard, but it is fourth. Here comes the Saints. It gets it. There. Thomas. Thomas. Justin Thomas is a tailback, guys. He's in the back and they use his speed to get outside. Thomas from one yard out. And that was a must for the Fighting Saints. So with 3.40 left, it's Justin Thomas and just a great play. I think everybody was surprised he was in the backfield. Sonny, you like this call, I'm sure. Oh, brother. Beautiful. 16 play drive, 77 yards, came down to fourth and one. Had they not made that, it was all for naught. But
Good camera work there by our cameraman on the sideline, Rick Allen. Going for two. And they're going for two, so a field goal could tie it, but this is a big play. A good call, because either way, you're going to have to have another score. You have to score a touchdown if you don't get two here. They give the ball. Emmert oh, now is going to pull it out. A little bootleg. Now, Tanner Egan is there. He throws it, and it's incomplete. But Tanner Egan on the blitz from his linebacker spot. Boy, is he playing tough. 16 plays, Bruce. Eight up, five minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. 77 yards on the board for six points. They're down five points. They need a touchdown. 3.40 left to go. We got to see the onside kick. Let's go down sidelines to Gene McNulty King. Hey, thanks, Bruce. Uh, I'm walking around the sidelines and I found this character from Butte, Jack Farreter. And Jack, I heard a rumor that you were named the number one booster of the year here at Tech. Yeah, that's a pretty big award, isn't it, Jeannie? It is. Tell me how that came about. Well, it means that the way it came about, it means it takes an awful lot of hard work to get the booster club built up to where it should be. And it means you've got to go out and do a lot of campaigning and explain the beautiful facility we have up here to offer. Along, It's a big package deal you know, as far as going to the games. The beautiful hyper building, the socials, and everything that we have to, to uh, that's involved in this campus. And anybody that might be interested should contact Jack Bird or myself or Chaz Jenniker. And we'd love to have new boosters up here. We need them in the worst way. Well, great, Jack. What are some of the things you personally have done for the Booster well, Club and for Tech? Uh, basically, I've done, aside from the canvassing that I do, I donate an awful lot of my original paintings to Montana Tech and also my print business. Well, great. They appreciate it, and uh, thanks for speaking with us. Well, I appreciate it myself. You Thank bet. You Back to you, Bruce. Well, nothing better than outstanding volunteers, <laughs> and uh, right that's what every <laughs> athletic program needs. So <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't really an onside. It really wasn't an onside kick, but they just kicked a squibber hard, and uh, it goes all the way down to about the 20-yard line, and that's where Car or Montana Tech will have it first attempt. Did you notice that Jay LaProuse was not back? They had Cotton back there. The, the free safety was the one who covered that ball. As the Ortigers put their hands team in, they take LaProuse out, so the, that's right. the squib was not handled by Jay LaProuse. First down and 10 now for Clounch for the Ortigers, and he's going to keep the football. He's going to keep and roll out to the side, and a good play as, as he was directing traffic and directing his blockers on the corner there. Well, Mr. Clowns is 13 for 23 in the passing department for 250 yards today. You see him take control of that football on first down, picking up uh, eight or nine yards. I mean, that's as good as it gets on first down. So now we're second and short. We could see anything, Bruce. The one thing I think we're going to see is ball control. I know Coach Green wants them to eat up the clock and put a two or three first downs together here. You know, the thing I notice right now is you come down to the end of the game, you need to keep the ball on the ground, run the clock, and Jay LaProuse isn't in the ball game for Tech. Interesting call, but Clouch did a nice job there of getting the good yardage. Man, Santi is the setback behind Clouch, and Clouch is just going to push forward for the first down. That'll stop the clock just till they move the chain. So the clock now at 238. And it'll start up right again, but uh, boy, just good uh, clock management now by Montana Tech. Is there you see a pretty good crowd on hand in Alumni Coliseum. It's cooled off here in the uh, since the second half, but it was a great first half, and folks were having a lot of fun. Did you notice there, uh, Sonny and, and Bruce, on that last one when Tech pushed ahead? The guy that was 10 yards downfield, Kelly Kuzma, the tackle, the homecoming uh, king, and he, <laughs> he's out there blocking for the team. He's looking to have a big celebration tonight if they can uh, win this football game. And it's 21-16, the clock now running at 2.25 left in the fourth quarter. Not many people have left here at Alumni Coliseum. You never leave early on the Tech Carroll game. Clouch now looking at that uh, clock at the end zone to see if he can get it down one second when they snapped it left on the play clock. And they give it off to Mansanti where he gets a couple yards. Well, you know those fighting Saints are trying to grab that football now, Bruce. They're trying to get a hand on it. They need the football to give themselves a chance. Give them the football, they got a chance, but they got to get it. Picked up two and a half tough yards there, but the clock continuing to run under two minutes now left here in the fourth quarter. They're not in any hurry to get back up to the line of scrimmage. You know, as you look at this, and, and Carroll does have to get the ball back, but if you're Montana Tech, Carroll's playing everything up tight. Would this be a time to look downfield? And they're going to send Perry and Halco wide to the right side. Halco is in the slot. Caleb Zimmerman, the motion man. And Clouch is going to do just that. He wants to get down and stay in bounds, and he does. And now Carroll wants to take a timeout. 
Clouch now did a nice job of getting down, keeping uh, the, the clock running. And staying in bounds. And Carroll takes the timeout, a good timeout there to stop the clock. Well, and they have to, because now with 121 left, you're trailing by a, a touchdown. The clock is becoming Carroll's biggest enemy, not the Ore Diggers. So 121 left with uh, the Ore Diggers leading it by five. Next week, uh, we'll be back on the road. I believe we'll be in Helena, Montana for Western and Carroll from Vigilante Stadium. The, the, the other Vigilante. The, the other, there's a couple Vigilante stadiums. And then we have a, a great game coming up with uh, the Grizzlies homecoming, some uh, pregame stuff before the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. A week from today against Cal State Northridge in Missoula. Montana at Portland State tonight in a very big Big Sky Conference game. Portland State, well, awful that's, tough. That's going to be a good one. Big game. Montana State uh, open this weekend uh, with no game. Uh, we have a couple. We have four Frontier or uh, Big Sky Conference games coming up, two with Montana and two with Montana State. Kelly goes wide to the left side, parries in the slot. On third down. Clouch now is going to hand it off to LaProuse, who snuck back into the game. And that wow. might have sealed it right there as he busts over midfield for a first down. That's the biggest run of the game for Jay LaProuse, Sonny. Isn't he a beauty? Jay LaProuse. We'll check some yardage on him. And Sonny, he just does a nice job. Yeah. And I think he was. everybody was surprised he had snuck back in. Look at him. Look at him. He's got two hands in that football from the second he gets it. He knows what counts. One minute to go. 113 20, left. 25 carries for 219 yards for Mr. LaProuse. I wouldn't doubt wow. we'll see him again. And we're hoping that uh, Gene and Ron can get Mr. LaProuse after the football game this afternoon. 25 carries, 219 yards. Whew. That's a career for most guys. He's Clouch now. He's just going to hand it off to LaProuse. Both hands on the ball again. The stop there was made by Dusty Lobdell. And a timeout is called quickly by Carroll with 45 seconds left. That uh, should be Carroll's last timeout. So from here with 45 seconds, Tech should be able to run it down. Appropriately named the Fighting Saints. I'll tell you, they never, ever gave a quarter or an inch in this football game from start to finish. They, uh, they've been in it all day. They're down by a touchdown. And I'll tell you, they're still looking for a way to win. And I'll tell you right now, Montana Tech coach Bob Green talking it over on the other side. He calls his whole team over because he's definitely talking, control the ball. Do not drop that ball out there, whatever you do. Well, he got the message to Missler or Prowse because he had both <laughs> hands wrapped around that <laughs> puppy. Well, it's been a great one. 21-16, Carroll trailing Montana Tech. But uh, these are the top two teams in the frontier record-wise. Both came in 2-0. and The winner of this one will take over command of the Frontier Conference. What a great conference this year. Some other big games coming up. These two teams will meet again. Rocky and Carroll, Rocky and Tech. Kane Clowns takes an E, and that should do it. Let's wait and see how quick they reset it. He might have to do it one more time. We will have uh, Coach Bob Green and a couple of the Tech players. Hopefully, Mr. Jay LaProuse and Coach Green. I know getting them from the other sideline might take a minute, so uh, we'll take a break after this, and then we'll come back with those interviews. So it's uh, the final play of the football game. Clock now at 15-14, running out. Clouch now uh, sees a six on the time clock, five. Takes a snap, takes an E, and that should do it. So the Ore Diggers of Montana Tech are victorious on their homecoming game in 1999 as they defeat Carroll College 21-16 here at Alumni Coliseum. That's the final. We'll come back with lots of uh, post-game interviews. Stay with us. Homecoming victory for the Ore Diggers of Montana Tech. Ron Davis with a very happy Coach Bob Green. Hey, well, Coach Green's here, and he's uh, talking to Carroll players as well as his own players. And, Coach, you got to be happy to get this one in the books. Oh, boy, what a game. How about the Carroll Saints? They played hard. I told you last week against Central Washington, they didn't play as well as they're capable of. We knew they'd play a great game against us today, Ron. And, Coach, they came out, and they did some things that made you do some changing up at halftime. They did a super job 
of running crossing routes, running void routes underneath and beat our coverage and got a big play for a touchdown pass. And we, we were in man coverage on the upfield leverage and we couldn't catch a guy. And so, you know, we got into more zone drops and, and, and half zone drops the second half. I can't say enough about our offense and in the game with a big play down there. We were a little spotty sometimes on offense, but we needed to end the game and, and we got it ended on the ground. Now, Coach, uh, you're right now you're out in front. You got to like that feeling. Well, yeah, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that says I won't celebrate after winning, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we got a long way to go. I mean, uh, you know, I told you, uh, we're like a woodpecker in a petrified forest. We got to keep knocking heads, man. <laughs> there you have it, a happy Coach Bob Green, and Coach, thanks a lot. All right, thanks, Ron. We have Jay LaProuse, and we're going to bring him in in just a second, Bruce. I'll send it back up to you for now. You know, Coach Green always has one every game. Uh, he has a good one. Pulls one out. <laughs> that was really nice. And we're going to go back down to Ron, who has Jay LaProuse, who had just an outstanding game for Montana Tech. You know, when they talk butte, you talk tough kids, tough football players, and here's one right here. Jay LaProuse, I don't know if you know this, 26 carries, 219 yards, two touchdowns, one of four yards, one of 46. Are you aware of those stats today? No, I had no clue. <laughs> Just out there trying to play hard. That's a great football game, son. Thank you. Now you got to be happy your offensive line did some good things for you today. Yeah, they blocked great. They did a really good job up front. What did you think of the Saints up there? They were really good. Yeah, they played tough. And now when you get ready to go ahead from here and after this uh, big outing, what, what's on your mind going out of today? Well, we're just looking at the Frontier Conference Championship. That's what we're mainly uh, shooting for right now. Now, uh, again, congratulations. A great day. And, I mean, you punch, you, you do it all, you, you, you end up returning kicks. Do you like being in all that? Do you kind of like, you don't want to leave the field, do you? I love it. It couldn't be any better. Tighten the chin strap and go for another one, right? That's what I like. Jay, congratulations. Great outing, and thanks for entertaining us today on Saturday Football. Thanks a lot. There's a class act for you guys, Jay LaProuse. He's a Butte kid. He played tough today, 219 yards, 26 carries. That's a great ball game in anybody's book. Thanks, Ron. An outstanding game. A lot of big highlights from Mr. LaProuse this afternoon. We'll come back with more post-game. Again, the final. Tech wins it 21-16 over Carroll College. Coliseum is slowly filtering out. There you see the total yards, and uh, Montana Tech really took, took over Sonny in that second half. They did uh, both on uh, both sides of the ball, Bruce. Uh, the Ore Diggers looked tough offensively, particularly toward the end of the ball game when they had to control the football, and they did just that. Well, there you see it. Uh, and Sonny, uh, uh, Ron has a, a guest now down in the field, a man in the middle for the uh, Ore Diggers of Montana Tech, and you're familiar with his father. That's right, Bruce. Uh, he has Tanner Egan, number 48, uh, linebacker, defensive yeah. end type for uh, the ore diggers on the field and I coached his dad Harry for the Great Falls Bison and again down there for Western Montana Bulldogs. He was a fine football player. I'll tell you he has a handsome son. A lot better looking than his dad. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that he's better looking than his dad, Sonny. That's one thing he's always wanted to be, isn't it, Tanner? Yeah, that's one. Cool. <laughs> hey, you've had a great game today. I mean, they came out. They uh, looked like they were double teaming and trying to uh, stunt a lot on on Travis Hedick, and they forgot that Montana Tech has another great linebacker out there in Tanner Egan. Yeah, you know, uh, no matter what we do, if they want to double team Travis, we got three other D linemen linebackers that can play ball. So if they do that. One of us is going to have a good game. You made open. some key tackles in this ball game. You came up with some big hits and some great sacks, especially at the end there. That big sack you had, yeah. that pumped the rest of the team up. Yeah, uh, I had a lot of family in this week, and I just it was great. It's awesome. That's what it's all about. 3 0 on the frontier. You feeling pretty good? I feel great. This is a huge victory for us. Uh, we got Rocky next weekend. Hopefully, go 4 0 and get everybody, but uh, we'll start working for them tomorrow. All right, Tanner, congratulations. Great game, and go have some happy homecoming Thank fun, you. okay? Thanks very much. Guys, there you go. That's what it looks like on the field. The Ordigers happy to be 3-0, and and uh, they're pumped up. Tanner, uh, an outstanding game from his linebacker spot. Uh, his cousins, Doug and Jeep, watching in Great Falls over TCI. And uh, there you see our, our logo on the truck, uh, Thursday night football. Well, next Thursday night, we'll be in uh, Helena, Montana, where Carroll College will try to get back on the winning track by hosting the Bulldogs of Western Montana College under first-year coach Dwayne Rilla. So, Sonny, that should be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll see what Carroll's made of coming back after a tough loss today. They can hold their heads high. They played very well. Well, Carroll College was in this football game right from the beginning, Bruce. But unfortunately, in the second half, they had a couple key penalties that hurt him hurt them offensively, they were moving the football in scoring position and got shut down really by penalties. 
Well, we look forward to being with you next Thursday night. Uh, kickoff will be at about 6.37. We'll be on the air at 6.30. I'd like to thank uh, our producer, Dan Rapcook, our director, Rip Cook, and all the crew this afternoon, and uh, our people around, Ron Davis and Gene McNulty-King on the sideline, our stat man, Rory Bowling, Dean Conklin, and Sonny Holland up here in the booth with uh, myself, Bruce Parker. We had a great time. It was a good Frontier Conference football game, and Tech goes into the lead in the Frontier